The Horrible Gamers podcast may contain content not suitable for all ages. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Horrible Gamers podcast, show number 446. We record on January the 22nd, 2024. I'm one of your hosts, Jesus Gonzalez, also known as Jesus Box Law. Today, I'm joined by my friend from the West Coast, the best coast, Gunny Chief Henley Merrill is here. Welcome back, Gunny. Welcome. Hey, I'm back with a new mic, back in action. You sound better than ever, Gunny. And That's what I was saying. And from Little Ohio, the Mayo, Steve Willier is back. Welcome back, Mayo. Welcome. Hey, hey thank you. What's going on, guys? <laughs> welcome, man. Welcome. And ladies and gentlemen, you can follow us on the Twitter at underscore horrible gamers. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. You know all that jazz. Find us on Spotify if you listen to Spotify. You can also join our Facebook group, Horrible Gamers Podcast Community. It's a close group. Anything you post in there stays in there. And you can join our Discord. The Discord link is in the show notes. That's right. Go to the show notes and and go to the Discord link and click it, and it'll take you right, right to where you need to go. And big shout out to our Patreons over at patreon.com forward slash horrible gamers to support the, support the show with the monies like Leahy, Jason Sams, Robert Noble, Chad, Henley M, Porkchop Pooh, Nipron, best HP host ever, Mayo, Evan, Rod Dog, Bark Bark, Tanaka, all in big caps, and just Bill Garner, second of his name. That's short it. and sweet. That sounded awfully short. Yeah, I mean, he, he it's shortened now. Like it, It's just Bill Garner, second of his name. I think he lost all his titles. Maybe I, maybe after Dragon's Dogma 2 comes out, or I don't know. Might be longer. <laughs> might be longer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he lost all his rightful titles. I mean, somebody must have beat him or something. I don't know. I don't know. He's between happened. castles. <laughs> do lost do lost his kingdoms, I guess. I don't know. Anyways, thank you guys for supporting the show with the monies. And gentlemen, let's get to talking about video games or whatever. Big news right now, ladies and gentlemen. Big news. Breaking news mail. The Earth mail mm-hmm. will will we will. You're on planet Earth right now, just to let you know. I think you don't know this. I'm informing you right now that you are indeed on planet Earth. Okay. I think everybody is. No, think. no. Mayo is. Okay. Yeah, I think I am. Okay, I think Mayo is. Okay, Mayo, listen. If you are on, if you reside on planet Earth, okay, just so you know, the Earth, the Earth will, okay, feel the effects, Mayo, of a geomagnetic storm Monday as a solar storm is expected to hit the Earth's atmosphere. Oh shit. Are you I think I'm feeling the effects. I think I, I'm feeling the effects right now. Okay? So Is this uh this coming Monday on the 29th? Listen. I don't know. I I'm just just whatever, okay? This listen. week? A Monday. This this, the, the, this Okay, a, listen. A random Monday. Pick a Monday. <laughs> okay. Listen. This month. Okay. A solar storm on the sun happened Sunday. And a part of the sun was ejected as a magnetic filament erupted from the star's surface, according to NASA. Oh, my God. It's going to hit the fucking fan. I got to look at this link. NASA News. A oh, coronal sh- mass injection thingamajigger. Okay, yeah, this is big news here, okay? Okay, so there's that. How does also, this affect us gamers? I mean, this could affect everything, guys. This could affect radio. Wi-Fi, your car, your brain, your phone, fucking everything. Okay. No more. Will my AM radio work in the morning? That's all I need to know because I no. listen to the weather, and the news on my AM radio. Okay, listen. I'm a boomer. There, there's also an atmospheric river storm in the Pacific Northwest, according to NASA. Okay, an atmospheric river storm. Okay. That's also happening. That's happening right now, apparently. I, I'm feeling the effects of this atmospheric river storm. We got a good soaking yesterday over here in okay. near San Francisco. That's not where I'm at, but California. Anyways, gentlemen. In Oregon border, ocean. In other news, in video game stuff, let's talk about video games and what we've been playing. 
I've played some games. I think you've played some games, maybe. So let's talk about what we've been playing, huh? I played a little bit of, uh, so this week, of course, the usual. Let's go to the usuals real quick. I did go back to Battlefield. Now I'm trying to complete the Battle Pass because there's like, I want to say three weeks left in the Battle Pass now, I think. It's officially at the three-week mark now for the Battle Pass. So there's that. I'm pretty close, I would feel like. I think I'm at level 70-something. I think I could do it. Maybe. I don't know. They have... Uh, I think there's like a been like a rumor they're going to add a new map to the new season. Hopefully it's a good map. Um, but yeah, Battlefield is still going, I guess. And then, of course, I played some more Call of Duty. Now, Call of Duty had that event going on. Remember I told you guys... I needed all that XP to get that skin. Oh, yeah, like 60 matches or something like that. Yeah. Did you get it? Guess who did it? I did it. Oh, nice. Did you play all night that night? I played for quite a while, actually. But, uh, no, I was able to get it pretty okay. Like, it wasn't too difficult to get. I mean, yeah. It it was fun. That's a pretty cool skin, actually. The skin actually is, like, it's, like, animated. So, when, like, you see it on your gun, it's, like, your, your gun is, like, moving. It's, like... It's kind of like weird looking. It looks like if you just stare at it too long, it feels like your screen is moving. It's fucking weird looking. But it's a really cool skin. And then I started looking at the other skins that I had from like events. And I have some pretty cool skins that I managed to unlock throughout the years, apparently, through playing Modern Warfare 1, Modern Warfare 2, and now this one. Um, apparently, I have some other pretty cool skins that I ended up equipping that look almost like this one, like red. Because this one was red or whatever. I'm like, oh, that looks pretty cool. I could put that one on my pistol. I'll put this one on my main gun, and I'm ready to go. So, yeah, I've been playing that. Right now, they have an event for The Boys, the TV show. Uh, there's a pretty cool new mode in the game. It's called, uh, what the fuck's it called? Something about the V powers, like the V, something about the V stuff, like the, like the fucking liquid serum or whatever. So when the match starts, everyone's just normal. And it'll be like Team Deathmatch, or it's more like Kill Confirmed, kind of, because the more kills you get, you have to confirm it. But instead of picking up dog tags, you're picking up uh, like little vials of the V compound or whatever. And so every time you pick some up, Mayo, you end up getting like new powers. So, like, if you pick up two of them, you get like super speed and you could like run really fast. And then if you pick up another one, you get durability, so you're a little bit stronger. And then if you pick up another one, you get, like, uh, like there's, like, two of them. If you pick up, like, four, you get, or five, I think you get, like, uh, what's his names? Um, fucking Homelanders, uh, like, laser eye things. You can use those. Mm-hmm. And if you pick up, like, six, you can use that. Remember, which, who was it? I don't know if it was the Starlight chick or the other chick that was Homelander's girlfriend. But you can use, like, this power that, like, Oh, the storm? Yeah, that pushes, like, everybody back or something. Like, it electrifies them and pushes everybody back. It's kind of... I think it was Starlight Power, maybe. I don't know. But it's whatever. If you pick up six files, you can use that. The crappy part about those powers is those are, like, on a... They're, like, on a one-time use basis. So, like, if you pick up five vials of V and then you use the laser eyes, it's kind of lame the way you use them. You wouldn't think you use them, like... You can just run around lasering people with your eyes. No, it doesn't work that way. So you have to, like, activate it. And then it does, like, a little animation, and your character floats up in the air, kind of. And then you're able to laser people for, like, I don't know, 10 seconds, maybe 5 seconds. And that's it. And the same with the storm pushback thing. Like, you activate it, and you push everybody back and kill them. But that's only, like, a one-time use. And then once you use that, you have to pick up more vials to get them again you keep your super speed and your durability the whole match but those two powers are kind of like a one-time use thing or whatever and um it's an okay mode it's kind of kind of fun running around the map really really fast especially when like you're one of the only people on the team or your team or anybody's team that has the powers because you could just outrun everyone dude like really i'm talking like you're moving fast as fuck and the people have a hard time hitting you. If you zigzag in a room and you'd like run up a hallway and you're zigzagging, they're going to have a hard time shooting you. Now, if there's two of them that might be able to get you, but if it's only one person shooting at you, they really stand like no chance to kill you. Um, so yeah, there's also like an event going on for the boys, like in, in terms of challenges, if you complete certain things, uh, you get like a boys, 
like a little charm. You get a sticker. Then you get like double XP tokens and a bunch of other crap. There's like another skin you can get for your guns if you complete all the challenges. And it's like a it's like a white skin on your gun. It looks pretty cool actually. It has the boys like the little logo on there. It looks kind of cool. Um, well, they saw, they were doing that too in uh, Warzone. I should say Warzone too. Now that that's a thing. Or yeah. has been. Anyways, so I've been playing a lot of that, playing Call of Duty and shit. Now, there's a new map out. It's called the Rio, and I haven't been able to play it. Like, <laughs> like every time why, the map comes... Because it's weird, because I didn't play Call of Duty when the update went live. There was like a 17-gig patch the other night, or Tuesday, I think. And I downloaded the patch, but I didn't launch the game. And then, now that I go to play it, and the map comes up... People don't vote for it. People vote for whatever the other map is. Because they're like, oh, that map, that map sucks. Oh, oh, that map is trash. So, like, I haven't really got to play it. So I don't even know what it looks like. (laughs) I know what you're talking about. Yeah. It's a new map. We don't like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like the people, like, played it the first night it came out and didn't like it. And, like, now nobody votes for it. Eventually, I'm sure I'll end up in a match on it. But it's, like, weird that, like, nobody votes for it. So I don't know. But yeah, played a lot of that. I haven't gone back to War Hospital yet. Uh, I haven't had the chance to go back to War Hospital. Um, I kind of just wasn't in the mood to be depressed and slowly dying and losing all my people. Because that game is fucking like hard, man. Like, like I thought Frostpunk was hard. And that game is really hard. But plus, it's also kind of buggy. Like I said, there was some shit going on the other day. Where I, I don't know why ambulances were piling up and the people were just dying in the ambulance because they couldn't get in the fucking hospital. I don't know what the hell happened. I, I it was I think it was a bug that I encountered because the game is kind of buggy for being like a a full release title. You know, it it, it has more bugs than I thought it would. You know, because even the developer even admitted to it having bugs and they they've actually released a few patches for it and and they've updated it a few times on Steam. Now, it sucks for the people that bought this game on, like, uh, if you buy it on PlayStation or Xbox, because if you bought this game on there, um, you're pretty much, like, shit out of luck, because these patches come out on the PC right away, but on the Xbox, it takes about two to three weeks for them to get certified, and then they get certified by Xbox and Sony, and then they get released, because like, Sony, Sony and and microsoft or whatever they have to approve the patches you know they have to test them or whatever before they release them so like it doesn't break people's consoles or some shit so sucks for those people but yeah i didn't know it was on console yeah 40 bucks on xbox yeah i don't know how well it would play on a controller man i really don't know how i mean i i have played frostpunk on my xbox with a controller and frostpunk plays okay on a controller, it's not the best experience, but it's not the worst either. And, I mean, there's other games that I have played on the Xbox that work decent, like uh, uh, CD Skylines Original. Like, that game worked pretty good on a controller, you know? Um, I never played the second one on a, con- on a controller, but I want to assume did. it runs okay? Yeah, I want to say, I since I, I did have Frostpunk on, I bought it on Steam first before it even came to Xbox, before it even came to Game Pass. And so I was already used to a mouse and keyboard, but that's where my time is vested in. So yeah. I just, I just always go back to the Steam edition if I'm going to play Frostpunk. For sure, Even for sure. I have access to it on Xbox. Yeah, me too. And I have played it like via the cloud on the Xbox um, cloud crap, and it it looks so bad. Like the <laughs> the graphics were turned down. I looked. Yeah. I tried to, you know, like. It just looks so bad compared to the PC version. And I get it. I get it, right? Because on the PC, I'm running it locally, and I'm running it on the max fucking settings, and it's going to look the best. But playing it on the console, it just doesn't look as good. I mean, it runs okay. It just doesn't look that good. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll talk about it just real quick now. So I, you know, obviously I had, now have the new Steam Deck, the new OLED. So I did fire that up, Jesus. I fired Frostpunk up to see how how it would look, how it would run. And it looks good. But boy, I'll tell you, even with I'm wearing reading glasses right now, I, I, I have been for the last probably the, the last couple of years. And it's the text is so small, but it's I don't think there's anything I can do about it or change it in the game. Yeah. But yeah, it was small, but at least I knew the controls. So I immediately like 
grab my Bluetooth con- uh, mouse for the Steam Deck. And I thought, I wonder, would this be easier? Because I'm not used to the to like a controller configuration, which can be configured, by the way, uh, for any game. And that's just using the Steam Deck or using like an emulator or uh, I forgot what they're called, a plug in. Right. Um, which I could use and I just kind of hesitated to do right away. So but yeah, it everything ran fine. It's just that it's not. Yeah, I, I can't see myself playing a game like that where the text is so fucking small. I can't can barely read it. So I'd rather play on something a little larger. Yeah, yeah, I get that. That makes sense. But besides all, besides Call of Duty and Battlefield, uh, I did end up launching a game and playing it for a little bit. Now, you guys may have heard of a game. So this is a little game. It's on Game Pass. It's a little tiny game mail that you may have heard of or not. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is it new? Okay. Old? Let me tell you. Okay. What would you guys think if I told you I'm going to make a game where I'm going to have animals in the world? Okay. Think of it like a, a Zelda style world. But we're going to have animals running around with powers and stuff. And then I'm going to let you craft things and build things. And then I'm going to let you like build these like balls or spheres we'll call them and these spheres okay you can use these spheres to 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 trap these animals in the sphere but first you got to run up to the animal and beat the shit out of it with your fist or your stick or something and and you beat the crap out of the animal till it's almost dead and then you throw the sphere at its face and then it captures it and then now, now, Gunny, when you need to craft stuff at your table, like you go back to your crafting table at your like crafting table thing, and you need to craft more spheres, you just go get materials from the world, okay? You just go and get your little materials, your rocks and your trees and your grass and your like special ore fucking stone or whatever, your magical stone. What about a crystal? Stone. Can I use a crystal? Yes, you have special crystals you have to collect, okay? And listen, and when you put the crafting materials on the table and you select what you want to build. Instead of you crafting it, you send the animal to craft it for you. So you release him out of the sphere and you tell him, get to work, motherfucker. And then you tell him, get to work. And then he runs over there and he starts crafting the things for you while you do whatever you're doing. And then he crafts them and then he's done. And the materials are just chilling for you at the table. And then you go and you pick them up, and then you go trap more animals with the stuff he just gave you. That's what I've been playing. Yeah, I think sound, I think we all been playing this. So. Sound like sound like a Pokemon Pokemon game I want to play on a console, but a clone, a hobo one. But listen, no, this not, is not a hobo one, a, a clone. This is not a little kid game, though, man. We're not training to be the very best. We are beating the shit out of these animals into submission. Yeah, we are. <laughs> okay, we are beating these animals into submission and making them submit to you. And then, if you're ever tired or hungry, you just pick an animal and then you say, I want to kill you. And, and then you go and you beat it up and kill it. And then you butcher it and then you eat it because you're hungry. But you don't, you don't want to go get another animal. You have an animal in your sphere. Like, like, why would you go get another cow to kill if you already have a cow in your field? Like, right. just, just kill the cow you have and then you have meat. So, so that's what you do. You just do that, Gunny. This is not a little kitty game, Gunny, okay? Listen, there's an animal in this world that all it wants to do is have sex with you. That, that's that's his purpose. Is that a bad thing? That The animal chases you around, and it, it wants to have Which, sex with you. What's that animal look like? I don't think I've run across that one yet. You haven't run across it? There's a, there's no. a pink animal. I'm there's not... a pink animal in the game. Was it the one that, like, early on? It looks like it almost, but it has, like, boobs and stuff. And the fucker chases you around. Okay, I've seen the ones that like the pink ones that run away from you. Like at the beginning, maybe because they saw you, Mel. Yeah, they were scared. Yeah. I, I ran them down. I ran them down. I'm yeah, like, are oh, you gonna run from me? You're gonna die. <laughs> I was chasing them. Okay, I mean, yeah, this, this is a weird game, man. Um, it, it is kind of weird. So, so I've been playing Power World, and like I get the name right. It, it's stupidly like. Very like on the nose. It's Pal World, and the animals are called Pals. And then and you, you capture use, Pals. Yeah, and you capture Pals, and then you have Pals, and then they're your little your pal, pa- right? Yeah. Then your Pal deck is like your Pokey decks almost, you know. And 
your pal spheres are like your Pokeballs, and your pals are like your Pokemon, okay? It's, I wouldn't say it's straight up copying Pokemon. I would say it's inspired by Pokemon. I, I wouldn't say it's really copying them because in this game, uh, you, uh, your pals can like help you fight like other pe- like people. They can help you kill people. Okay, listen, there's like fucking poachers in this world and you go out and with your pals, you can give them guns and shit and be like, all right, all right now we're going to go and we're going to fucking raid this fucking poacher camp and then you either kill the poachers or trap them because you can do that too and then you set the animals free or keep them like the animals they have and sometimes they have really like rare exotic shit that you want to keep and you're like well i want to keep this because this is like a rare animal like i i couldn't find one of these and you guys have it right here so like it's it's kind of crazy like it's a weird game and i got the you know and like this is like a weird it's a weird game because to me, it's like I wish they wouldn't have went with the art style they chose. Why not? Because it kind of gives that Fortnite look. That's is my that point. Not- <laughs> like that, that, no, that's my point. Like this game is not for kids yet. Parents will see their kids playing this game and just assume, oh, they're playing Pokemon. Oh, they're playing, they're they're playing some little Pokemon kid game or whatever. When they're fucking running around slaughtering animals and fucking having sex with them and fucking like mating different animals and shit to make baby animals to make new animals Didn't like you can, you can uh uh sell the people as well like you can yeah yeah i yeah, heard that yeah. i did watch a video on that <laughs> capture yeah, them and sell you, them like slaves i don't know it's kind of yeah you, yeah you can sell them in the black market and shit like you could sell like like, like i guess animals can, too you can have different animals breed like a different type of animal breed with this type of animal to see what animal they can make you know, like, this is, like, some shit the Nazis did back in the day, right? They try to breed dogs and cats and shit. And that's what, like, that's what these guys are doing. Like, like you just, they said, like, no, no, like, you do that. Like, they recommend you do it because they're like, oh, well, you, if you breed this with this, maybe you'll get a special one. Like, you, you'll you get some special animal. And, like, I get some of the stuff. It's, it's like, it makes sense. Like, if you have two, two animals that have, like, really strong power or whatever, and they're very, like composed and they don't get stressed out easily and they're very like i don't know like very like whatever strong and you breed them together their offspring or whatever their baby or whatever they're fucking sometimes it'll inherit the same traits as the parent it'll inherit like oh this this little fucker is like very strong because both of its parents were like really strong fucking pokemon or pow they're not pokemon they're pals they're they're really strong pals or whatever, and they're, they're fucking whatever you know. Like they, this guy inherited their traits. It, that makes sense, but like I almost like I said, I I <laughs> I kind of wish this game wouldn't have went with the aesthetic and went with. And but I I know I know why they did it. Everyone knows why they did it. You know yeah. they did it to yes. to 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 capture the kids' audience. Hundred percent, yeah. Even that though it's generation. not, but this game is not even like a. The problem with this game, though, guys, is this is crossing a new line because it's gotten so big, right? It's so big now. Okay, they sold like a news article five billion. Epic for help. Yeah, listen, okay, there are five million copies sold of this game on Steam, and that doesn't include Game Pass, by the way. That doesn't include Game Pass, which it is on Game Pass PC. Okay, and okay, so there are five million copies sold on Steam for a fact. Plus, we'll say a million more people on game pass just a low number maybe there's way more on on game pass playing it six million people playing this game and it's obviously targeted at children but it's not a children's game and they're crossing a new threshold a new problem that i'm gonna see like maybe this is the first company that's gonna be one of the first companies with this problem is they're gonna get fucked because this game looks like a kid's game and some parent is going to walk in and see their kid beating the shit out of a fucking Pokemon or whatever looking thing. And they're going to be like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm just fucking, I'm killing my fucking Pikachu looking thing because I want to fucking eat food. And they're going to be like, what the fuck? What are you, what are you doing? And it's mm-hmm. going to be some little six-year-old kid doing this shit, you know? Like, like oh, I just kill my animal and I get more food, mom. And they're like, what the fuck are you playing? You know, and then they're going to get hit with the lawsuit, I think, because this game, the problem with it is is, is, it's not rated by the ESRB at all. So, like, there is no rating for this. 
and it doesn't have a rating and it cannot get rated because it's a early access title. Okay, that's the other problem. And the third problem is that like because of that and because it looks so much like a kids game, parents are going to be like what the fuck's going on here? You know, like like what's going on with video games? Like are they just making video games that, for little kids that are super violent now, you know? And I get it. You may your argument may be well well, Fortnite looks like a kid's game, and kids obviously play Fortnite, and Fortnite has guns and violence. Yes, but, like, I, mean, I feel it like is, this is different. It is the Unreal Engine 5, though. So, probably, I mean, probably easy to make with that style. I'm just saying, I think they're going to be in a, in, a, in a world of hurt, because I think people are going to start backfiring at this game um, for just no. how, like, over-the-top and, like, edgy it is. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think uh, stuff like Minecraft that kids play, right? And you kill an animal in Minecraft. That's how you get your food. I mean, you can burn things, yeah, animals, people, but you you kill pigs and chickens and stuff on Minecraft, right? That's how you get your food. Yeah, I, I think I don't think they're going to be in a world hurt, Jesus. I know what you're saying, and I think we'll see maybe something on our local news about it, or you know, oh, this game, but it's like Pokemon, but it's not, you know, it's more. There's some sexual and violence, I, you know, where I think it's going to be like this, Jesus, where I think that because I was watching a video today talking about the different Pokemon uh, versus pals and how they resemble each other. And the YouTuber basically gave like three examples like, OK, so these three, you know, all look similar to the Pokemon where this one's just slightly different. And that was just one example. I'm thinking that is it the Pokemon company or night and that anyway, but I think they're. They're probably looking at this going, OK, let's let's build something here against these this uh, this fucking developer company or whoever. Right. So we I'm just haven't seen you, it yet. It's going to be problems for them because this game. OK, listen, there's like I told you, right. You beat the shit out of your Pokemon, not your Pokemon, your pal. I keep saying Pokemon. I'm sorry to the Pokemon company. I'm sorry, Nintendo. I'm not trying to make your name look bad here, but you beat the shit out of your fucking animal. You capture it, and then you make it work for you. And now, now, Mayo, when you have multiple stations set up in your base, like you can make a home base, and you can have like a crafting station for this, a crafting station for whatever else, some other crafting station for medicine, some other fucking station for getting wood, some other station for getting stone, etc. You have all these different things, right? And you have all these different pals. You can put the pals to work. In these stations and say, you work here, you work here, you work there, and you do this. And they start mm-hmm. working. But now you don't just do that. You can also set them to work hard, to work really hard, or to, like, be a brutal, like, like you're going to work so fucking hard, you're nonstop. Like, this is nonstop work. Like, you're, like, and then it even tells you, like, hey, uh, if you work your pals this hard, their mental health decreases. Like, like they just start going crazy. Like, like they just lose their shit because they're, like, losing their mind because they're working too hard. And on top of that, they start getting, like, like injuries. They start getting ulcers or broken bones or, like, stuff like that. Now I'm saying, okay, like, I don't know what the point of that is to be in this game, you know? Like, like you, you argue in this game is safe for kids. I'm arguing I don't think it is. It doesn't sound like it because I didn't know any of this till you just mentioned it. It, it doesn't sound like it is because, like, like, you can... Like, you can literally work your, your pal almost to death. Like, t- you can literally tell them, like, you're working nonstop, and you're not going to stop. You're going to die. Like, and then if they get hurt or injured, then guess what? You can heal them, but you have to have the medicine to heal them. To have the medicine, you have to make another pal make the medicine. So now you're having a pal make the medicine, work really hard to make the medicine, and he's going to get injured making the medicine. Like, that's how this stuff works. And, like, I don't, I don't know. I just don't think it's a kid game. I think they chose the wrong art style for this game. I, I think a more... I don't even know what kind of art style I would have went with with this game, honestly. Like, I don't even know, man. Like, because... I, I don't know. Like, just a different style. It would have been better, I think. Yeah. And just, like... And just have, like, a warning in the game. Just a little, little fucking warning, dude. In the yeah, it doesn't have game. anything like that at all. Like, like at the launch, it's saying, like, hey, look, this game is really development, plus... If you're a parent or if you're like if you this game is not intended for kids, like just say that in the beginning, you know, but I don't think it does. When I launched no, it, nothing. All it said was this game is in early access and it's in early development stages or whatever. Like 
we are working on it or something. That's all it said. And then it launched to the main menu and then the game launched. It didn't warn you about like. I didn't even see a rating. I'm sure there is one, but I didn't see one. Or does that's it even be required for an early access? That's what I'm game. telling Mayo. They're they're like the first company to reach this threshold where they've gotten so big so fast, but they're not even a rated game. Like, so what? Like, what rating do they get? Like, what, yeah, what? I guess I'm speaking more from the console side because I figured Steam. Okay, I mean, how many kids are you know really on Steam under the age of eighteen? Just, oh, I think a good chunk. You think so? Like. I don't know. Well, okay. I guess what age should I use, Mayo? Sixteen to say under the age of sixteen. You know, I don't know, but probably, yeah. I don't know what be what would be a good appropriate age for this type of game. Would it be thirteen? I don't know. The kind of the recommended, uh, you know, movie rated system. I have no idea. So yeah, I don't know. Because I mean, you can see you can see just little short clips of this. Uh, it's not something I've unlocked, but as soon as you see him use that parachute or your character, like. I'm like, oh, is that that's Fortnite? No, no, it's Power World. Okay, they do look exactly alike. I can see Epic going after them for that. So, well, they've been reaching out to Epic for help, so I don't know. Oh, right, because they do use Unreal Five. So, yeah, <laughs> it looks like they were like, "How does this look?" Yeah, exactly like Fortnite. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. They're like, yeah, we like it. Yeah, and um, I don't know, man. I'm just, it's just a weird game. It, it really seems it, like a little edgy or whatever. It, ah. it had a little bit of, for me, I don't know about maybe with my PC or what, I had a little bit of jankiness on my end. Like, I had a little bit of stuttering, um, a little bit of performance. It just kind of acted kind of weird. Sometimes it was, I don't know. Uh, some you know. of the crafting was kind of slow, which I think maybe you can upgrade that maybe. I didn't go real far into it. I had I had a problem that made me kind of lose interest in it. It's like I, I did something, and I ended up dying for some reason, right? And it asked me to like where I was going to respawn. And I clicked over top of like where my base was at. But when I respawned, it put me on an island like across the water from where my base was at. I couldn't even get to it. And uh, I had no materials or nothing. And I couldn't find any wood to make like a torch or anything or a, or a workbench. And then my character just got cold right away because it was starting to turn to night. And, I, and then I died again. And then I had to try to respawn. And I had a heck of a time and I ended up being able to eventually respawn back, back at my base. But I lost my items because I was kind of far away. And so I had to like work my way back to get all that stuff. But that's kind of like where I stopped. Um, last night I was playing it with Nico. He was checking it out. But uh, I didn't get as far as like some of the stuff you mentioned, Jesus. I did not know you could uh, have them craft for you. Which is yeah, you can nice. have them. You can just have them craft for you. You can have them like, like take guns and help you kill other pals. <laughs> I, I, I only captured a couple. I didn't do much building. I did the part where, you know, like, I had food, and I had some, uh, there was a pal, he kind of kicked my ass. He had, like, this magical, like, aura around him, yeah. and it was making this noise. And I'm like, oh, he's he's mine, I'm going to go get him. And he's only, like, a level, like, five <laughs> or six, but he, like, got angry and just started, like, punching the shit out of me. And he like, char- charged me, and it just was like, bang. And I ended up dying to him. But uh, he, yeah. he, I don't know what he gives you or why he is making all that, like, sound and stuff, but I don't know if you ran across, it, ran across him just... or not. And it's then I ended up when me. I died that time and I I got moved to, to that island by yeah. accident. It was like a way higher level than where I was at, right? So I'm like, yeah. all the enemies were like in their 30s. And I'm like, oh, these things are cool. But I, I just had to avoid them. And I'm like just running from my life trying to get back to my base because I'm <laughs> in this area of all these enemies with their 30s. And... Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think this game has gotten popular. And I don't think it, it's because of like the game. It's I think it's just people... That are playing this game grew up with Pokemon, and and people have I don't know like in their head you know imagine what would Pokemon be like if it was a little bit more crazy like I don't know with guns and shit and that's what these guys did they were like hey you know what fuck it how about we give these things guns and like fucking like put some crazy shit in there how about it this let's, let's add some like more darker shit in here and like let's just do it and they did and it's working for them. And I think that's not a fact that the game is good or great because there's flaws to it and there's things that people won't like. There is crafting and survival that some people won't like, you know, besides the whole like capturing creatures and training them and fighting with them and whatever the fuck, there's that. But there's also like the whole like survival type game attached to this where you have to have a base, you have to have like a fucking resource. Like like an arc survival. It is. And, And... 
It is like Ark Survival. So it's like they took it Ark is. Survival, but they said Ark Survival is too serious for kids or whatever. How about we make it cartoony? Okay, let's do that. And then they, they took the aspects of Pokemon, of capturing and shit, and they put it together. And they're, they're getting a big audience, I think, because I think a lot of the people playing grew up watching Pokemon. Like, I grew up watching Pokemon. I know what it takes to be the very best, Mayo, okay? Oh, okay. Okay, like I know the song, motherfucker. Okay, I know what it, I know what it is. Okay, Mayo. All right, I know what it takes to be the very best. Like no one ever was. Okay, that's you had the DS, right? You had it on the <laughs> DS. I had it. I do Pokemon. I had the cards. I used to play with my fucking cousins and friends, and we used to we used to trade the Pokemon cards. We used to go to the mall and buy like the packs of Pokemon cards and like fucking try to get like cool cards out of there. Then we battle each other with the cards. Then we watch the cartoons, and then, and then like back did you have in the a Pokemon day, like, shirt? Did you have a Pikachu shirt? Uh, no, we had like Pokédex though. Like there was like a little Pokédex. I remember they had like a little Pokédex toy that had like all the Pokemon on there on the little toy, like a little screen that popped up, and it said like, "Well, this Pokemon is this." And there was like a. Nowadays, I'm sure there's like a Pokédex app probably, and then there's Pokemon Go and all that shit. But like. There was a like a lot of shit when I was a kid. It was like primitive shit. Like there was Pokeball toys, but like like what could you do with that? You know, like there was some of them. There was like the the cheap hobo Pokeball toys, which is probably what I had. And then there was like the other Pokeball. You toys. You had the I ones had. out of the gumball machine, right? You had to pay <laughs> a quarter probably, for it. <laughs> probably, but there was other real Pokeball toys that had like that they opened up and they had like little Pokemon in them. Or whatever, and then you could like play like you were catching Pokemon or whatever. So it, it's kind of cool, man. But like, that's what I think it is. I think it's these motherfuckers caught the audience of the people who watch Pokemon growing up that are now like adults and they're like, you know, okay with violence and crazy shit in the game because we've seen it in other games. And but I think these fuckers are gonna get hit hard with the lawsuit coming from Pokemon and the Nintendo company and all these fuckers. Yeah, Nintendo don't play around with that either. Like, they're always... I think... I think I know what you're saying. Are you trying to say, Jesus, where... Because the one thing I noticed, again, early preview game, maybe they're getting away with a lot of stuff, but maybe we'll have to sign, like, Eulas and stuff, like a Square Enix game, you know, at the beginning of the screen. Would that be okay, Jesus, if we did that? Got a proper rating... Um, yeah, right I now, would say nothing, nothing, nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Put a fucking warning there saying, hey, man, if you're a fucking parent, don't let your fucking kid play this shit. It's not for kids. Don't do it. Don't fucking do it. That's what I would do. I would cover my ass so hard. If I was the maker of this game, I'd make sure that fucking warning was the first thing that popped up in big fucking letters in like 10 different languages. I'd put that shit in fucking Arabic, Russian, Chinese, Japanese. Fucking every goddamn language in the world. Sign I every Yola for every country. I get it. Spanish, English. I don't give a fuck. We're making sure every motherfucker, even Canadian. Okay, we'll make sure the damn Canadians know what they're reading. The Canadian too, language. Right? I get it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, hey. oh, sorry. I agree, hey. Eh? Let's play, huh? Uh, oh, sorry. Eh? This this <laughs> this game is not for your kids. Eh? Sorry. Oh, sorry. And then just put a sorry at the end. Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's not Canadian. Sorry. <laughs> but like, uh, yeah, I just, yeah, I think these guys are they're gonna be in trouble later on. But the game is okay, and if you're willing to play a game that's a, a survival game, crafting, and you're into that shit, cool. This is probably for you. Oh, but you also have to be into, like I said, and Mayo said, you have to be into capturing animals, fighting, probably getting your ass kicked a few times. Probably realizing, oh, I want that Pokemon, not Pokemon, that pal, but I can't get it because it's too powerful right now. I need to get guns to go get that fucker. Right then, now, you then, just gotta get axe. Yeah, then you gotta, like, okay, then, okay, if you're willing to deal with all that, this game might be for you. Now, one problem I see with this game is when it does go 1.0, if it does go 1.0, if they don't get sued to the ground by Nintendo. Okay, if this game ever makes it to 1.0, these people that are playing right now, Mayo, are going to lose all their progress, probably. And they're going to be fucking pissed. How mad do you think people are going to be that have played yeah, this game right now? Do a reset? 
Oh, they totally are going to do a reset, dude. They ain't no fucking way. Like, oh, yeah, we're going to go 1.0 and let you keep all your little pals you've had for fucking a year or two. No way. Well, they want everyone to start fresh on the same level, you know? And I, I think they're going to be a reset. I think people are going to be mad. And people are going to be like, you're fucking full of shit. Fuck this company. This company said there wasn't going to be a reset. And then they did a reset and I lost all my pals that I fucking been breeding for two years and I had the perfect breed of pals and now you fucked me and now I, I'm I never think, playing this game again. <laughs> you're right. You're right, Jesus, because right now, Mayo, this is only on, and this is all the information I've gathered just from today and yesterday, and that is the fact that, so it's on Game Pass on PC. Uh, I know Bill said he was playing it on the ROG Ally, but then he was also playing it on the console Xbox, but then the Steam people are different because Steam has the dedicated servers where right now it's not that way on Xbox. Uh, I believe it's just like a mul- you can choose multiplayer and I don't it's not like an instant world, but I guess anybody can join my game if they wanted to. So, yeah, definitely. I definitely see like a reset coming because if we had that cross play progression, early access then then I would say, you know what? Nope. Keep your level. You're good to go. Yeah, it's weird. It's, it, you know, we don't we don't have we, you can't cross play with, and, with uh, Steam people on Xbox right now. Yeah. And it's uh, not on PlayStation, by the way, yet. But you can switch back and forth a Game Pass version of, you know, your PC and Xbox. But if you have the Steam version, you, you're going to have to have two different save files, you know, so you can't go from the Game Pass version to the Steam version right. without having to start fresh. So you got to choose early where you would have played on, I guess, and keep. Yeah, you know, keep good. Now, do you think with all the success of this game, do you think Nintendo and them uh, and the Pokemon people will get together and say, you know what, this is successful? Like we see it. Do you think within this year they're gonna drop a trailer for a Pokemon, the adult version of Pokemon? Now Pikachu has a Glock. <laughs> uh, I, Pikachu, no, but, yeah. Pikachu from the hood. Pikachu, Commando, Pikachu, <laughs> Pikachu. I choose you, and then Pikachu jumps out and he carjacks you with the Glock and a ski mask, and then it's like GTA Pokemon. Don't hey, play what? GTA. Play, <laughs> yeah, this. You know what? I think we'll see it first. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think I think we'll see it on Fortnite first. I, I think Fortnite was. Think like, so? They'll have it out here in like two weeks. They'll have like a version of it if they want. Yeah, to. and then and then uh, the developer for Pal World be like, "What the fuck? Already, oh, you helped us out. You've done this before. Like, Epic. It already looks like Fortnite. It kind of like the world. You think Fortnite? Oh, what do you think unreal. Fortnite? What do you think Fortnite has to do? Add animals? Yeah, they're just yes. add animals. Do you yes. think? Like, do you think? You do you them. think? Do you think what's his name? What the fuck? That'll be the objectives. What's the guy's name who owns Fortnite? Sweeney, Tim. Tim Sweeney. Do you think he's gonna? You think he woke up the other day, like Friday night, and and he like walked into the office and fucking like started fucking Zoom calling all everybody at fucking midnight, Zoom calling everyone. (laughs) Hey, motherfuckers, wake up! You're working overtime this week, and you son of a bitches, get the fuck in the office right now. (laughs) I just left my forest to come in here to make this Zoom call. Get the fuck in here right now. I need 500 motherfucking animals that look like Pokemon, but they're not Pokemon, okay? But they got to look like them. What, what are they going to call gonna, them, Jesus? What are they going to call gonna, them? They're, they're going to call them Fort Monsters. Fort Monsters. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Fort Monsters, okay? It's they're going to call these motherfuckers. Back. That'll be the Fort beta. Fort Monsters. Fucking- and we're going to fucking put them in the game next week. We're going to release a patch. Okay. Mid-season update. New map. We're going to fucking say there's they're a gonna, hole in the map and there's fucking animals coming out of it now. Jesus, they're going to bring back saves the world, the save the world edition and just throw some animals into it. And, yeah, and that's what you mean first times when he does something like this. They're going to yeah, use that. They've done this animals. before. You're crafting. That's you what it was saw, before. It was, it was a crafting survival, right? Before night became a before it became a yeah. VR. Remember, remember it, me it and was, uh, the Eric. The I world bought was a crafting survival. You know, I bought two copies. That. I paid eighty bucks for for, for Fortnite. You, you know they have that source code and all that stuff. They're holding on to it. They're oh. like, oh, we can just release that and throw some animals in there, and here we go. Put some more fucking animals in there. We'll, we we're gonna we're gonna. So this guy looks like Pikachu. He's not Pikachu. Give him fucking a red tail. He's not Pikachu. He's 
He's Pikachu. Okay, he's not Pikachu. Hey. They do very much look like, like Pokemon, though, don't they? Like, I, I don't know my Pokemon. I don't really play do. it, but like, fucking I watch it, look, and I see. If do. I was not told they, that was not Pokemon, I would be like, that's Pokemon. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I'm saying, like, you know Pokemon it's is pissed, because they're like, they're like, what the though. fuck? They're like, what the fuck is this shit? It looks just like our shit. And it's crazy, because some people have even now been going to Reddit, and they've been taking the models of some of the animals in Power World, or not, I don't even know they're animals, I guess, I guess they are animals, but they're creatures or whatever, in Power World, and they've been downloading the models from the Pokemon games. Oh, and they yeah, said, yeah. Yep. They said, look at this fucking model. It's the same, the same fucking model. It's just they rounded the ears, they rounded the eyes, and it looks a little bit like different, but it's the same size, same style, same looking creature. Almost well, you see as well the, the, different colors. The mod, mod already that brings in the main character from Pokemon, the 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 boy or whatever with the hat and everything. There's a mod where you can mod the pals to look like Pokemon. They did yeah, that too. So, I mean, so like, yeah, uh, Pokemon's gonna be pissed, dude. I'm telling you right now, someone at Nintendo is swearing in Japanese. Oh yeah, they are. They're, they're fucking yelling at everyone in the office in in like angry Japanese yelling. Like in the movies, okay? Some guy in there, he was doing kung fu in his office. And, like, you know in, like, the movies when, like, they walk in and tell, like, the bad guy, like, something bad happened. And then, like, they, they show like they show the doors. It's, like, one of them, like, Japanese doors, like the little cloth doors that slides open. Okay, there's bamboo in there, guys. There's some soft piano violins playing. And this guy is just training really hard. He's wearing, like, his black karate outfit with the black belt mayo, okay? And he's training really hard in there, and he's he's karate chopping bamboo and shit, okay? Breaking it with his fucking hands and feet, and then someone stops him, and he's like, What what you want? And they're like, Sir, uh, sir, uh, I, I got an update on that uh, pal world situation. And then he just looks down at the tablet, and he karate chops it in half. Because yeah, right he's fucking tab. pissed. Because he's fucking mad. He just karate chops a gunny, okay? And then he walks out. And then everyone's like, oh shit, like this motherfucker's about to fucking kill someone, okay? Like, like hide the interns. He's going to kill someone. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> that's what just happened at Nintendo, guys, okay? That right there, that scene just happened over there. They're, you know, they're fucking freaking out. Everyone's freaking out. This game is too big. Too big. Too big, too I'm fast. I think they got too big too fast. I've got something here, Jesus. It's part of a news article, but I figured it's important to actually read this here, where it says right now, Pocket Pair, which is the parent company for Pal World, said they are not concerned with the similarities. Though, speaking to the Japanese gaming news outlet Automation, the CEO, Takoro Mizobi, said that Pal World has passed all the necessary legal hurdles to clear it of copyright infringement. Huh. Okay, that doesn't that doesn't extend on that, but... He said he also noted that there haven't been any legal actions taken against Pocket Pair for its overt comparisons to Pokemon, at least not yet anyway, end quote. But they, not yet. Like they're anticipating it coming already, though. Like they're already <laughs> yeah. you know, like, trying to, like, double check again, get in trouble, yeah. Not as of today, by the way. But yeah, That's I think crazy. I even saw an article about they want to make plushies, you know, because this thing's blowing up. Oh, gosh, they're going to get real. I think that's where they're really just getting into hot, you know, deeper in the hot water with the, the plushies. All right, these guys, they're going to feel a world of pain, dude, when they get that motherfucking ninja team that Nintendo sends over to them. All right. To fuck them up. <laughs> <Okay>? Yeah. <laughs> they're going to be in a world of pain, okay, when the Nintendo ninjas show up. They're going to show up at the office, turn up. the lights off, the power. Yeah, they're going to fuck your shit up, man. They're going to show gonna up. They're going to take an axe fucking... right to the electrical box. Bam! Can't even use your computer now, pal. These fuckers are ninjas, bro. And then you try to run outside to get away from them, and there's going to be the samurais waiting outside. <laughs> like, oh, Blowing fucker. those poison darts at them. Two, two, two. <laughs> Taking them out as they try to run to their cars. Hey. Nintendo ninjas and samurais coming to your office to fuck you up. <laughs> okay, this, this is where you don't fuck around, Mayo. You don't fuck around with this shit, Mayo. Okay, this is no. Nintendo. Listen, Mayo. Nintendo is a hundred-year-old company for a reason. Them motherfuckers. You think they don't have ninjas? 
Oh, they yeah. have look ninjas. At, look, look at their history. Look at the things they've dealt with back in the day. They got they sleeper think, cells yeah, in America, nice, man. Right? They, 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 got they, had, they, had, they had brothels back in the day. I mean, come on. Yeah. They got samurais. They got ninjas. Yeah, they got everyone. They got the fucking Yakuza in their pocket. These motherfuckers ain't fucking around, all right? The last company you want to fuck with is Nintendo. Even you know, Microsoft, keep... even Microsoft knows better than to fuck with Nintendo in Japan. Okay, like you just don't fuck with them, dude. <laughs> <laughs> try to sell, try to sell an Xbox in Japan. See what happens. <laughs> yeah, you, there's a reason they've only sold a hundred thousand consoles. Is because you fuck get your legs broken probably if you try to sell a fucking Xbox. <laughs> you don't know? go downtown Tokyo trying to sell that thing. Yeah, fuck no. You get your legs broken or something, dude. Like, yeah, I'm just saying. Be, be careful, power old people. Okay. You know, you guys got a hit. You better fucking hire some bodyguards with that money because Nintendo don't fuck around, dude. Nintendo don't fuck around. But that's all I really played this week. Okay. I play a lot of Call of Duty, a lot of Battlefield, some Power World. And uh, what else did I play this week? I don't play something else. Any more Throne, Throne Fall? Any more of that? I haven't, but I know they got an update not that long ago that added like a. A female character as a playable character now, and then they added like a couple like new levels. Um, but I I won't play more of that when it gets like fully updated, uh, like once again, uh, because I played a lot of it and then I kind of ran through all the levels and I kind of got stuck on the last level. It's really fucking hard, and I kind of just stopped playing it. So I'll go back to it. It's a fun little game, you know. Where you're gonna have to strategize and. Really, it's a really fast-paced game where you have to strategize and kind of figure out after where each wave is going to attack or whatever, what's going to happen, and try to like set up your troops in a certain way so your whole town doesn't get destroyed. You know, you think, okay, do I sacrifice this part of the village to try to save the main center or whatever, or what do I do? Because once your main like little, uh, you as you know, Gunny, once your main little hub falls, like your little castle, I guess, or whatever. Once that goes down, you're, the game's over. So it's a yep. fun little game. I like Thronefall. It's actually a lot of fun. I kind of want more of the... Uh, I want them to update the other game, too, that I was playing not too long ago. Uh, For the King. Or what was it? For, not For the King. Uh, uh, what the fuck's oh. it called? Diplomacy is not an option. Oh, they made that, too? That's the same developer? Uh, no, I want them to update that game, though. Whoever made that game. I want them to update it. Because it's been, like, a year now. And they haven't released like a major update for that. Like they have released like a few updates, like a, like an endless mode, a, a sandbox mode where you could just kind of do whatever, and kind of like a bunch of other little modes like that. But they haven't released more to the campaign, and I want them to actually start like showing us the campaign more because I want like, I like the campaign. I want to play more of it, you know. Um, so yeah, but that's all I've really been playing, guys. I mean, what have, what have you been playing, Mel, besides Power World? Okay. Uh, you know, I put a little bit of time in Power World. Uh, these other things, I, kind of a short week for me. I've been working a lot extra, so I've uh, been working pretty much every night this week. And then during the day, I've been kind of busy. But I was playing some uh, some Dead Cells. You know, I did finally get past. I think I talked about it last week, and you were kind of set away for a second. But I, I got to 4 BC, finished 4 BC the traditional way, killed the last boss. Was, I thought I was going to move on to 5 BC. And they're like, the last boss just drops a note for you and says, basically, you have to get to fifth cell by killing the giant, which is a completely different path, a whole different process of things. So you need to go and do that. And I've tried a couple of times. I've not gotten there yet. I've, I've gotten to the giant and I've gotten killed by him. Um, so I'm trying to get him beat so I can actually technically move on to 5 BC. And that's the last level of difficulty for Dead Cells. And this will open up... Um, when you do the traditional route and go and kill the, the old last boss of the game, the Hand of the King, it'll open up, I think, two more levels and a new final boss. The whole grand, grand, you know, boss. The one that you only get to see if you beat it in the highest difficulty level. Yeah. So we're working on getting to there. Been playing that. And, like, those runs, you know, like I only have, like, you know, like during the day because I work on night shift. And it's just, it's like, I'll sit down and do a run, but a run will take about an hour, hour and a half sometimes, you know. So it's like hop on there and, and then just kind of hop back out of it. That's kind of, I would do a little bit. Um, I did check out power and I played it on the Xbox first and then I played it on PC. Um, I kind of started over. I, I made a new character. I didn't start over. I just, so I have two different characters saved on there. Um, just checking it out, how it felt on PC compared to the Xbox. 
I, I would say it did. I was getting a little bit of stutter. I don't know why. Maybe because I I was messing with the settings. I could, I did kind of max the game out. Um, I put my uh, my FOB slider all the way up to a hundred, and I did set the game like max graphics and max maximum uncapped frame rate. And I, I was getting about one hundred and eighty frames, but the game just felt like I had a little bit of a stutter to it for some reason. I don't, I don't know what the deal was, but maybe it's something doing the settings. Maybe I need to back something off or you know turn something on or something to help it out but um it's a little bit of that and like i said i didn't get nearly as far as you did i just kind of one time like i said i died and i it respawned me like i said on this island and i wasn't supposed to be out here and like i had a long ways to get back so i'm like oh crap i knew i was gonna die so again because i didn't have anything with me you know and I'm just trying to run back there and I, I seen a couple items on my way i'm like oh that's kind of cool or that's cool and they were just easy to pick up i picked them up and tried to carry them back with me but then i had died and so I dropped another bag. Cause like, I don't know if you've died in this game, Gunny, but when you die, you drop everything you were carrying. So you have to go back and pick it up. So I was like, I'm not going to go back and pick it up. And it was getting kind of late. So I went ahead and decided to turn it off. And I haven't, I haven't died yet. Because I'm just I, I, in that beginning area. Luckily, I watched a tutorial before I started playing this. So then, yeah. yeah like he, I mean, he didn't really say stay in the area, but he was talking about, well, you can just always make another crafting bench. They're super easy to make. Yeah, and I did that yeah. one somewhere, like, I crafted one, and I just kind of left it there. You know, I I, I crafted a, a workbench, because it was starting to freeze, and uh, I think that's after I died, when I was trying to work my way back the first time, when I ended up in that high-level area. I'm like, found sticks as I was running back, and I was able to make a workbench, but then I had to find more sticks to make a torch to try to keep myself warm, you know? So I'm, like, trying to find stuff to keep myself, but I didn't really see a whole lot as I was moving and trying to work my way back, because I was also losing health. And so then I, I found some berry bushes, you know, so I stopped and I, I plucked those and I, I tried eating the berries. And they weren't even healing me. Like I was taking so much damage from the cold that then I, I just died, you know. And then, like I said, and I was like, all right, I'm I'm good for the night. I'm going to pop off now and, you know, find something to do or whatever. I think I went and watch some TV later on that night or something. But so you, you said um, you play, played on the PC Game Pass and on the console itself. Yeah. But it's not it's not the same thing. It's not the same uh sync it was uh, yeah yeah it's okay. and everything but i just created a new character on the pc like this to try it you know to see um when i did on the xbox it was kind of just a quick oh i'm just going to check this thing out so i wasn't messing with the character creator a whole lot i just kind of launched the game just wanted to see what it was like and then i was like okay i might like this better on mouse and keyboard but i don't know i, I almost feel like controller is pretty good with it like maybe because it's third person or whatever but i haven't gotten to the shooting aspect of it so once maybe once i get to the shooting aspect i will like mouse and keyboard better you know that was my line of thinking too is you know when it comes to shooting things it's like i just like mouse and keyboard so yeah besides besides that i did, I did fire up the playstation again the other day and jesus i, I was looking the other day and mass effect 2 remastered is 49 dollars in there if you buy it straight out thinking about picking that up because i don't own it already I have never played it yet. I've only played the first one. So I'm thinking about maybe this this payday this week, probably picking up the remastered. Is um, that new or are you thinking about the trilogy? Uh what do you mean the trilogy? On the Mass Effect? Is, are you talking about the trilogy? No, like uh, that's The Last of Us. Oh, The Last of Us. Okay, sorry. I'm thinking oh. of something different. Never mind. You did you did, uh, you did I, say I, PlayStation. I think, <laughs> I think I think you did say Mass Effect though. He did. Yeah. I thought he said Mass oh, Effect. Maybe. I was like, wait, I, what? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Well, the last of us. I don't know why. What is it? Mass Effect, but so. I mean, they're both they're both equally as good. I would say Mass Effect. I mean, yeah, they're though. both damn good games. Yeah, but um, Evan, <clears throat> Evan hated this game. I know he hated the second one. Um, the problem with the second one was that it felt like it almost like it's like it drags on for a while. Like, so you start off as Ellie, you play as Ellie for like I don't know ten hours, whatever, and then like the game will switch over and have you play as the other chick. I forget her name. And then you see the other perspective. But what I like what they did with the story is they showed that both sides of what, what happened in the story. Like, you view in the beginning the perspective of Ellie, like, her, like, what she's seen, what she, why she wants revenge, and what she's doing, why she's doing what she's doing, right? And you understand, and you empathize, and you want to be like, okay, like, yeah, I, I understand why she's doing this. I want to see this through. But then you also see why the other people did what they did. And you see how, in their eyes, Ellie is just a fucking psychopath that's coming to kill all your friends. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you kind of see, like, 
you see both sides of the story at the end of the game, you know, and then at the end of the game, it kind of ends like in a weird, like kind of like a weird spot, you know, mm-hmm. um, which I don't know how they're going to do the sequel to that. If they're ever going to do a sequel to it, I, I don't know. I honestly think they're just going to start with the new character. Like, like yeah. oh, this is a whole new person, a whole new survival thing in the same world. And then like somehow they may run across Joel and Ellie at some point or like, Abby. Yeah, run across Abby at some point or whatever, like maybe, you know, but I don't I don't see them continuing the next Last of Us. I don't think I don't see it either. With Ellie being the new main characters. character. Or even Abby being the new character. I don't I don't see that like Abby's character was a strong character in the second game, very like she was a main character pretty much uh, uh, alongside uh Ellie or whatever. But I don't feel like they're going to continue the story with them. Because I think what they're going to do is they're going to either, they'll do this. They'll continue the story with the new character, and or if they want to, okay, if they want to, they'll reverse the story and, and make it, take it back in time when Abby was with her, like, when her dad was alive, when he was at the hospital working, and how her story, how she ended up being a survivor in this world, you know what I mean? Kind of how in the beginning, how it starts with Joel and his daughter, and they're escaping the town, and the daughter gets shot by the military and all that shit. They'll do that again, but they'll do it with Abby and her dad, and show how they got out of the city. Or yeah, whatever, keep that fa- female character. So they either do that or whatever. But I, I think it's a good game. And now they did I mean, say for, that this for, this for new forty nine for forty nine dollars. I mean, for me because I've never played it. If I would have, yeah. I mean, and then on top because of that, this, you're uh, actually, mode. yeah, you're actually getting, well, the new mode is like a challenge mode. I heard it's, it's like a challenge, oh. like a survival mode. Yeah. Um, I, I just pulled it up. We were talking, it's called no return. It's a roguelike survival mode. Yeah. And it says uh, experience deep combat and entirely new models survive as long as you can. And each run and choose your path through the series of randomized encounters featuring different foes and memorable locations throughout the last of us Two, all accumulating an intense battle boss battles um it says unique gameplay modifiers can offer new and unexpected challenges as you fight to succeed and survive and a host of different encounter types uh it says you can play as a variety of characters including never before played characters like dina jesse tommy and more and they have they each have their own unique traits and different play styles and unlock skins over them as well as you progress through the main mode of the game so like on top of me just getting the game you know I will have this roguelike survival mode as well for fifty nine for forty nine dollars for fifty bucks. Considering I've never played it before, anyways, you know. So it's like I could see if you already own the game and if you played it already, you may not be too excited about it. But I'm like, well, I've never seen this part of the story yet. I've only heard about it. I kind of have an idea of what's going on, but you know, to get to maybe experience it, maybe it's worth and, me picking it up for. $50. And did you did you did you watch the first season of The Last of Us on TV? Yeah, yeah, I did. Okay, then yeah, you're kind of caught up and you're ready to go. I, well, I beat the first game, like I beat the remaster, yeah. the PS4 remaster or whatever it was. You know, it's on PS Extra, on yeah. PS Plus, but the the second one is not on Plus, so I, I have not played it yet. But so I think I think I'm just going to pick it up. But in the meantime, I trying to get into it, Jesus. I I just haven't a lot yet. Is I, I started playing a little bit of God of War Ragnarok again. Okay, and I just can't really get into it. It's just kind of like. Uh, did you play the know, new but, DLC? No, I'm not even close. Like, I, I know it says like, oh, you got you should finish the game first, but I thought about just jumping into it. Yeah, I, I have not tried it. I just I don't know. It's so far everything I've done, you know, it's like I'm literally in the mine area. Like it's pretty early in the game. But it's like this dwarf mine area. And it just it's just puzzle, puzzle, random encounter. Okay, how you how do you freeze this moving water and then you gotta use yes. the chain to move this thing? <laughs> yeah. I'm just not a big fan that's of the God of War way. And, uh, yeah. and that's just fight some more enemies. Yeah. Yep. So maybe I don't know. I got wore out on it in the first game, but I mean, it's been a while since I played the first one, but it's just not grabbing me in this one. I'm just like, God, another puzzle, you know, like I just want to get through this. I just want to like progress the story, fight some bosses, you know, fight some enemies, but it's just like, Oh, no, let me figure out how to get this water moving in the right direction first. So I can cross this pathway. And it's then I just dread walking into one of these big open areas. You also you're like walking into this area, and it's like big, vast area, and you're like, you need to get over here, and you got like five different puzzles to figure out how to get over there, you know. And I'm just like, okay, I'm just kind of not too excited about it already. (laughs) (laughs) 
So yeah. I don't know. It might be a long game to play. I know it's a good game. I never really like, oh, it's really great once it gets rolling. You know, I've played yeah. it for a little bit now. It just, it's just not grabbing me. So I don't know. But I, 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 I want to play, play Ragnarok right? too. I haven't gone back to it either. I just literally played the intro of it. I never really went back. I need to go back to it. I need to, uh, as far as The Last of Us 2, though, I think I might even end up getting the upgrade for like 10 bucks or whatever because they said that they added new levels that they cut originally. Yeah, and like, like three three or four levels so you can go back and play. Yeah. And then you have they, to uh, full 4K, right? I guess the other modes would used to be like, uh, yeah, what's the like old checker version, like a, like a lower resolution, evidently. Yeah, yeah, it was like a, it was like, remember it was like 1080p, fucking 60, and like it was the fake 4K. It wasn't real 4K. Checkerboard 4K. Yeah, yeah, it was that fucking 4K. It still looked pretty one. good. Oh, dude, it looked fucking great. But yeah, I bet so it I looks even be a better. Good game. And I'm going to be able to play and in was, old red living room. Yeah, and recently I was thinking, like, you know what? I, I have my PS5 hooked up in the living room. There's a big-ass TV out there. It's not OLED, but I think it'll be comfortable and nice to play it on a big-ass screen, you know, and have, like, that cool, like, epic fucking story on this huge screen. And, uh be able to enjoy it that way i think it'll be interesting um but yeah i actually i have my oled i do have it but it's not like hooked up anywhere it's just sitting in that closet it's just fucking <laughs> it's just wasting away in there man my yeah. girlfriend won't no wall to put it on right my girlfriend won't let me put it up dude like you see okay hold on let me see if you see see this this is a big ass tv in my bedroom Every fucking room in this house has like a fucking huge TV, like a massive TV, and there's nowhere to put it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm you have like, a garage? Uh, Maybe prop uh, it up in the garage. I Maybe mean, it's too cold in there. I don't know. Uh, no, yeah, I don't know about no OLED and, and a cold garage. Well, because you don't have. Well, you do have the cold over there. I say Gunny does. Just take but... that TV down. Put that one in the closet. I trust me. I try to convince her to put this fucking TV. She won't do it because she says, she says it's too small. Right, because they like, don't get the fact that OLED quality is so yeah. good, but they're not big. Yeah. You know, yeah, I guess it's not a work. big People TV. Like, yeah. I'm like, oh, I have a really nice gaming TV, and they're like, oh yeah, well, what size is it? I'm like, oh, it's a 65 inch TV, and they're like, oh, that's small. <laughs> you know, that's I'm like, I have an 80, I have an 85 inch TV. I'm like, yeah, but mine was like, it's an OLED, and it's 120 hertz 4K, and they just look yeah. at me like they're dumb. I'm dumb, like what? You know, yeah, I, like, that... I have no idea. All they care about is inches and the size of the yeah. TV. You know? Yeah, I think that the TV in here is like a like a 60 inch maybe maybe a 65 and then the one in the living room is like a 75 and then the one in the other bedroom is like this one maybe a little bit bigger so they're big fucking tvs but i trust me i try to convince her dude to let me take this fucking thing down and put mine up but she won't let me so i'm like you know what fuck it i'm not gonna argue whatever <laughs> like like i don't care i don't i don't even play my playstation that much i, I won't care if i don't if i don't think about it i won't notice it but I do notice it, but I don't want to notice it. Problem is, <laughs> yeah. Now that we mentioned is, it, problem is that I I game on my PC a lot, so I noticed the OLED. Like she she like she looked at my monitor, which she's like, "What do you mean? Like, what's so special about it?" She's like, "How the fuck did your monitor cost so much?" And I told her, "I'm like, it's a fucking OLED." I'm like, "Just okay." First of all, I had to explain to her like that ultra wide why it's better, <laughs> and then I had to explain how. Why the OLED is better? She did not understand it. She's like, so, so "Did you get the?" Uh, she, she just roll her eyes at you and be like, "Whatever." Yeah, Jesus, like, you should have just been yeah. standing. You know what? You know what? She heard Jesus. This she, all she saw was you with a tool belt. And you're just banging two hammers together and talking. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> like, okay. I was like, uh, I was like look at the, I was like, look at the fucking blacks. They're black. It's fucking. She's like, it looks the same on the TV. I'm like, no, it doesn't fucking look the same on the TV. She's like, it does. It looks the same. I'm like, fuck out of here. I got so mad. I, got, I started getting mad. I'm like, fuck this shit. It's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like she's telling me I wasted 1300 bucks on my monitor or whatever. You know, she's, she's like, it looks the same as my TV. I'm like, the fuck it does, dude. I'm like, it doesn't look. She's like, yeah, it looks the same on both. She's like, it looks my the same on both. My wife watches movies on her, you know, like her iPhone. <laughs> it's not even like the pro phone or whatever with the one with the good yeah. camera right yeah. i'm over here with the like you know 160 hertz fucking ipad 2 you know newer model watching things go fast women, yeah women just don't give a fuck okay about tech dude like they just they do not give a fuck they as don't long care as it plays as long as it plays and they can uh, it, it looks yeah, cool yeah it looks cool it's fine 
It could be the stupidest fucking... 720p, they're happy. Yeah, it could be the worst piece of shit ever, and they don't even fucking care. Like, she also didn't understand how the Apple TV that we have in our bedroom is worse than the Apple TV I put in the living room. And she's like, well, she's like, well, why'd you put yours in the living room? And I try to explain to her, like, look, we watch more movies and stuff in the living room, and my Apple TV is a 4K one. She's like, but mine's the same. I'm like, it looks the same. And the I'm like, the box looks the same, but it's not a 4K one. <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> like, I legit try to fight with her. I had a fight with her about like how the fucking four, like the 1080p Apple TV she has, we have in the bedroom, it's not a 4K one. She's like, but it looks the same. I'm like, right. how the fuck does it look this? It doesn't look the same. I tell her, like, the resolution is not the same. I'm like, the resolution is not even for the TV that it's made. Like, like yes, it'll play and it looks okay, but I'm like, it will look better if you bought a 4K one. She was like, no, nah, I don't. She's like, we don't need it. We got- <laughs> I, I, <laughs> think it's where, I swear they look at it as like, it plays the same movie, so it looks the yeah, same. You know, it like, looks the oh. same. Like, and then, like, she tried to argue with me that a Roku box was better than the Apple TV. And you don't know how much I had to fight her on that one. <laughs> I'm like, your fucking Roku box is a piece of shit, I told her. Like, look how slow it is. Because I would, like, you know, you boot up, like, the Roku thing. Then it take, like, fucking 20 seconds to boot up the apps. Then it take, like, 10, 15 seconds to launch Netflix. I'm like, look how much faster it's on the Apple TV. You just fucking press the button, and Netflix is launched, and it's fucking running. And, oh, no, my Roku was better. <laughs> I'm like, whatever, yeah. dude. <laughs> whatever, man. Like, fuck, like, you, like, fuck out of here. It's weird too, is I, I never like, realized that I have different like different apps on my on my TV, right? On my good LG yeah. OLED in the living room. Like I have Voodoo, right? And I have like two hundred some movies on Voodoo. But on my TV in the living room, my Voodoo has a free section, like in the app where there's free movies, right? And you just have ads, so there's all these movies. Yeah. But her TV in her bedroom and the other bedroom TV we have, one's a Samsung QLED. If you open the Voodoo on theirs, it doesn't have access to the free movies. And if you That's search weird. the movie on Voodoo, you have to pay for it. So I'm like, That's it's like so weird. Hobo. Like my, my, my LG, I mean, that was an expensive yeah. TV, but yeah. the app for Voodoo on there has free it's, movies. It's obvious, it's obvious that LG. Oh, that's right. Paid, they are different. Yeah. LG paid for those free movies. You know, yeah. And Sam, Samsung didn't. That's what it is. Yes. Well, and, her, and hers, her TV, the one in the bedroom there is a, uh, as a Amazon TV, like a fire TV. Oh Yeah. You know, and it, it, it doesn't have it either. But my, my, the other bedroom, the TV, like I said, that that's a good Samsung QLED, you know, a 65 inch, 120 yeah. hertz 4K. It doesn't have it. And it has the Xbox app on it. You know, I it's can weird. play, which I would like to have that on. Yeah. The, uh, LG, it's but... the LG probably paid for the free movies to be on their shit or whatever. You know, it's like that happens a lot with TVs and stuff. But right. yeah, it's man. On it's on the box. It's on the, yeah. It, it's in me, here. It, it's so included. Hard. It's so hard for me to explain to her like this tech shit. It, I'm is, like, it is. I'm like, I'm like, she's like, why'd you put these stupid Apple TV things on here? I'm like, cause they're better than your fucking Roku's, and I'm it's not like dealing this, with Jesus. the Roku. I can use yeah. a good example. If you bought her like a a, a Jimmy Coors purse, a Jimmy Coors, right? Yeah. And she'd be like, what's this trash, right? And you're like, you wanted a a Coors purse. It's not a Michael Coors, you know. <laughs> See my point? <laughs> this is why this OLED TV is better. You get my point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, like, like yeah, like, that's exactly how, yeah, you're probably right. You're completely probably right there. Yeah. Because yep. uh, she did not understand why I unplugged the Rokus and I put my Apple TV thing up. She's like, what did you do that for? I'm like, because the Apple TV just works better. I'm like, you don't even need a remote for the Apple TV. You just fucking use your phone. You're, yeah, use your as phone. The if remote, you're, as the if remote. As the remote. Apple user. Phone. Yeah, the phone just works as the remote. I'm like, that's how much easier is that she's like it's not i'm like whatever <laughs> whatever man like i'm not gonna argue with this bullshit but uh yeah and that and the same thing with the kid man our kid is the same fucking way we you know she got a ps5 uh she got a new ps5 for christmas right but she was upset that her ps5 slim didn't look like my ps5 because i have the old one I got like the original model and hers was the slim. And you yeah. know how many, you know how much I had to explain to her that the PS5 slim is the same exact fucking shit as my console, but better and smaller with more memory. I had a little shit like sit there and explain to her. I'm like, look, 
the same shit. I'm like, I'm like, I will take this fucking PS5 and use it as my own if you really want this old one. But I'm telling her like, like this is a fucking same. Did you tell her the same model. architecture? Right? Yes. Did you get that part? She was like, whatever. She's like, it doesn't look the you same. Should have just been like, okay, we'll trade. <laughs> like, 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 you know what an SSD to, is, hon. I, I literally was about to, man. I was like, Jesus, like, how to explain to, like, to, uh, women. You were man. like, look, this one has this many cores. I don't know. You're just, you might as well just talk to a wall at that point. <laughs> yeah, like, it, it, it did not fucking care. It doesn't look the same. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, man. But nice, man. Yeah, I, I suggest you pick up Last of Us. Like I said, I was planning on kind of maybe picking it up. I, I was thinking about that game the other day, and I'm like, ah, oh, that game... I might, I might want to play it again, but I don't know. And then, like I said, you're right. You just reminded me I have God of War still, so maybe I shouldn't. You see, I have God of War, and I also had the the last um, Horizon Zero Dawn to play. Like I never, uh, yeah, I haven't, I haven't played. I haven't even launched that new one. I have had it forever now, and I've never launched. I've had it since I had the the first PS5. I had. I, <laughs> <laughs> That's when I got it. I haven't launched it yet. So you I guys don't... surprised me. You guys surprised me. You talk about these PS exclusives that some you didn't launch or play much, but then you guys are not Final Fantasy players, but you both finished 16 or whatever. What the fuck? Right. Oh, I tried. The, I tried the remake and I didn't like it. So I tried the demo. Yeah. They had that free demo. I didn't care for it. I don't know, man. Like some games are just fun at the time and some games just don't seem like they're fun at the time. Like Horizon Zero Dawn, I have no interest in going to that right now because I've been playing Avatar and like Avatar to me is like fucking Horizon almost, you know, like except Avatar is in the Avatar world. So, um, yeah. Do you have any la- interest that's coming out? I think it's next month. Um, The Last Ronin? Oh, I it? remember. I seen trailers for that. It like, looks really good. Every time I every time I see it, though, I, I think it's not uh, like that. Um, isn't it that like, like the Ghost of Tsushima? Uh, the Ghost of Tsushima, like, but yeah. like a side scroller yeah. kind of. Is that the one? I think that yeah. was that. No, this, this looks like Ghost of Tsushima, like the gameplay and everything. Wasn't it like at like E three or the game? Uh, not it wasn't a Game Awards, but it's the one they do in Europe, but equivalent to E three. Yeah, I think it's, I think it comes out the end of next month or the beginning. Jeff of... Keeley thing. I don't know. Not this the Game Awards, though. So. This is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. What the fuck? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, maybe it was Xbox. Yeah, this is a Ninja Turtles game, dude. Maybe I, I'm thinking it was called The Last Ronin. I know there's the Ninja Turtles Last Ronin as well, but uh, I'm gonna pull it up here just to see if I'm looking to think of the right game. But uh, this game, this is a Ninja Turtles trailer <laughs> I'm watching right now for oh, PlayStation. No, it's it's called it's called Rise of the Ronin. Oh, uh, I'm about to say it. Yeah. yeah, I'm just going out there right here. It comes out. Oh, three okay. Times, Oh, man, I'm looking at this. I've it, never even seen it. Looks this. A lot, looks a lot like Ghost of Tsushima. Is it going to be one of those hard games, though? I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't look that way. I mean, it looks like, like it's... Like, uh, like one of those... Oh, you're going to die 50,000 times to the same boss? Cause you, oh, fuck yeah, I'm picking this up. Oh, yeah. Holy shit, man. Yeah, doesn't, I'm, I'm in, doesn't look just like, uh doesn't look just like... Uh, <laughs> it literally Tsushima does look just like Ghost of Tsushima. Even though with, like, like cities. Looks like um, he, yeah, he literally looks just like yeah. Look, this is and they did show like a little bird from like remind me of Assassin's Creed. It showed like a little falcon flying above the city. You know, like I'm like, oh, yeah. did we do that? Did we? Really and it's do funny that? on the page for the game. I'm at their. I'm on their website, and uh, you know for the PlayStation thing, and it says is it exclusive? And it says yes, it's exclusive to the PS5. And it says on here more games like Rise of the Ronin. First one on the list. Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah. <laughs> First one on the list, dude. Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, but it says sure that, yeah, this is based in Japan. And uh, you have to make a choice to who do you want to align with in terms of, like, the houses or whatever. And then and then you have to fight for those houses to take power over Japan or whatever. So I'm assuming it's based on, like, a samurai. Kind of like Ghost of Tsushima, where it was based on samurai, but in, like... In Ghost of Tsushima, it was based where uh, the Mongolians invaded Japan, right? And this one, it's like more like samurais fighting against other samurais to take power of Japan or whatever. That shit's cool, man. You ever watch? There was a show on Netflix. I remember a while back. It was a show about like fucking samurais on Netflix. You ever watch that shit? No. It was like a documentary style type fucking show where like they talk about the samurai and then they talk about like 
how they fought and the shit they did and like the battles they had and some of these fuckers were ruthless dude like like some of the clans of the samurai were fucking hardcore dude like 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 they'd betray each other some game of thrones shit going on like they they do some crazy shit and then it also talks about like how the uh how how like some of the samurai how originally most of japan was all samurais right they were all like these fighters that would fight really good with swords and shit and like you know you stand in the battlefield gunny and you fucking fight till you die you know like that's what they did but then okay one of the clans was like you know what let's just go sneak up on these guys in the middle of the night and kill them in their sleep and then we don't have to fight them <laughs> so that's and then they started talking about how like that's how like the ninjas were created right. like, that's what i was they, thinking they, they, yeah they, they they originally were samurai but then they started like some of the samurai clans started using like sneaking tactics and shit and they started like getting really smart about like you know what why fight our enemies in battle like in a big open battlefield where we get our asses kicked if we could just sneak in there in their camp in the middle of the night and fucking kill them when they're in bed like they're not even expecting us to be there, you know? So that that's kind of... It's a cool documentary. I forget what the fuck it was called. You probably just search up Samurai on Netflix and you find it. Samurai but, documentary. Yeah, man. I love documentaries. But, I watched a lot of did, them. <laughs> like you did mention, the the the, the last Ronin that like we thought it was first talking about, that, that looks like yeah. it's going to be really good, too. Like, that's an interesting plot. Yeah, I don't know if you can apply where no, Michelangelo the is the last... So Michelangelo is the only one left alive. All the brothers are dead. And he's out for revenge. Oh. So it's kind of dark. Um, yeah, is that a PlayStation exclusive? Because all I see is PlayStation logos with it. Uh, I, do, I do not know. Jesus, it's called Age of Samurai: Battle for Japan. Yeah, those two <laughs> names are going to be confusing. The Last Ronin and what was the other one? Rise of the Ronin. Rise of the Ronin. Yeah, yeah. but they both look good. Uh, the Last Ronin, though, that one. <laughs> um, that looks like it's going to be on everything. There's there's a couple of good games coming out. I seen that that looked interesting. I'm like, did they just have a new show and I missed it or something? Because uh, on my actual PlayStation there was like uh, some other games like anticipated or something like that, and they showed a couple I never heard of before, and they all looked really good. I'm like, yeah, what are what are these? And they, and they just said J- just announced. Huh. So I don't know like how long ago these games were announced, but uh, I don't I can't. It's not pulling up on the website, but on the PlayStation, I kind of want to. I'm not even bullshitting. I kind of want to buy that. Uh... Uh, Kill the Justice League, dude. Yeah, that one looks interesting. It looks kind of cool, man. Like, I don't know. To me, it looks kind of cool, actually. Like, I was looking at it the other day, and I was watching, like, trailers and shit from it. It looks yeah. kind of like, like not a bad game. I don't know. Do you guys I think it's going to suck? Should I wait to buy? Um, I don't know. Because you have to kill all the heroes, right? You have to kill, like, uh, Batman and Superman and... Who else? Who the fuck else is in the Justice League? The Flash? The Flash. Joker. Um, you get free DLC as a uh, a playable Joker character. Well, the Joker would be the one trying to kill him, right? Because you're part of the uh, Suicide Death Squad. Death. Yeah. So, I think it's going to be good. They said it's a like their biggest game they've ever made. They said it's their... Yeah. I remember coming across an article about it, like how it was their most in-depth game they've ever done. I think it'll be cool, man. I can't wait to kill Batman. That'll be nice. Yeah, so the Joker is officially announced as of today. Which Joker are they going to go with, you think? Uh, so I'm looking at a tweet, a, a, a post on is it X. The su- is it the Suicide Squad Joker? So it says here, uh, I just noticed that the new Joker kind of looks like the dude from the Elvis movie. Really? Remember the El- the movie Elvis? I don't know his name. But who was the guy? Wasn't the guy with the Suicide Joker like in the movie? Wasn't he the one with green hair? Like... Austin Butler played Elvis. The one, the one with face tattoos? Oh, yeah. Uh, gosh, what's his name? Yeah, I'm looking at him now. Yeah, he looks like him, but he doesn't have the face tattoos. Yeah. Oh, this is lame. I don't know if I want to play this game now. Uh, that was Jared Leto. No, I don't want to play this game anymore now. I mean, what? it looked cool. Okay, but listen, they just announced that Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. Okay, it's going to have the Joker as a playable character. For season one. Hmm. So they're going to have seasons in this game. And they're going to have three more seasons, according to uh, the the developer Rocksteady. And each season will introduce a new playable character. and A one new supervillain, play- probably? And one new playable environment, among other things, such as new weapons and activities. 
So the first season has the Joker. It has a new boss fight, has new uh, weapons, something called episodes, and then activities and shit. Like, ah, uh, lame, dude. I'll just buy it a year later for the full edition or whatever, like the, whatever, what do they call it, like the Game of the Year edition or something? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, That's 25 wrong. characters. It is. Traditionally, all those Batman games have always gone on sale, you know, really cheap. Yeah. Warner, is that still Warner Brothers? Yeah. Is it? I don't know. I think it always is, right? Or who makes the rock steady, something with the word rock in it? I don't know. They make really pretty games. Those Batman games yeah. always look good. Yeah, it is. It is Warner Brothers. Yeah. Well, yeah, it is. So, well, we'll see, man. Yeah. I mean, their their Batman games were really good. The All the Batman games they've made were really good, pretty much. So, as long as, like, the game is almost like that, kind of, in terms of combat and stuff, I think it'll be good. But, yeah, yeah, I think it will, too. Anyways, uh, let's move on here, yeah. Danny. What, have you, what else have you played? What, what else have you played, man, I guess? Oh, no, that, I was going to say, uh, Danny, you can go ahead. That's pretty much all I've been playing. They kind of bounce yeah. around. So yeah. just kind of back back to Power World. I just started it up basically. Um, just played a, about an hour before we started the show. But um, yeah, so Prince of Persia. I only played like the demo. I actually don't even know how much this game is on you know consoles and PC. But I played it on Xbox, and the I'll say right away like the controls actually feel pretty good. You just like you know as a as a side scrolling platformer like. Nothing really like super new or anything right off the bat, but you know, A for jump, right for to kind of you know dash forward and X to strike an enemy. So I'm like, cool. So I don't know. Um, like I said, it looks good. Yeah, story is just whatever. Just kind of keep pressing A to kind of get through it. And you know, I think the the meat of it is always going to be just in the gameplay itself. So, but I know this has been talked about before, but it was something I've kind of never seen before where. I was telling Mayo because we were in, you know, in the Discord together. I was like, "This is kind of like Dead Cells, man. It's like Dead Cells, but I mean, not really. But really, if you pull up the map, it kind of gives that same look to it. But kind of what it does is, if you're playing on an Xbox and it's you press down on the D-pad, and I don't know if you can just do it anywhere, but if you're in an area, like it'll take a picture of the area you're in or the dungeon, the cave, and you can see like, oh, there's a chest there. But obviously you can't reach it, you know, with the current ability. So I'm sure it's going to be an area where you come back to it. So um, and I think probably after you come back to, let's say, that area, once you've leveled up, you can probably access that chest. But then I don't know if it automatically deletes the picture. Right. Or I guess you really just don't need it anymore. So there's that. Um, Yeah, I saw somebody that put a post out today on the X about. You know, like, oh, I'm already I'm already 17 hours in. I'm, I don't think they said 80 percent of the way through the story, but they're really enjoying it. So, yeah, I, I can definitely see Mayo picking this up. Prince of Persia, Mayo, the lost crown. So, yeah, I, I, I tried the demo, but uh, I didn't get real far into it. I was like right before a show one of the nights like last week. Yeah, I, I think, the one I thing I'm, it, I'm a lot like Dead Cells with better graphics and stuff. I just I, don't know, I wasn't a big fan of the way the combat felt, but like it was OK enough. But, you know, and Less. people are like, oh, it's like a side scroller. Like Dead Cells is like so unique in combat because yeah, there's such a variety of weapons. I mean, in the demo, you had what? You had like your swords and you had your bow and arrow. Is there any other things you? I always forget there's a bow and arrow, right? I always think, oh, I can press. I think it was A or Y or something. But I mean, do you totally, miss- totally forgot to use that. I- I'm thinking. Right. Uh, see, I was so stuck on Dead Cells, right? Mm-hmm. That I keep thinking, press X, dash, parry. Well, I'm know? curious. Do you, do you stick with the same swords and you just upgrade? Like the whole time, you know, they just become more powerful. Or do you? Oh, get, right. Like, do you level do, those up? I have no idea. Do they yeah. just keep leveling, and, you, and it's the same kind of attacking the whole time, or does the game kind of change things up? I, I haven't looked into it that much, but that's yeah, that's what me I'm neither. About. Yeah, good question. So, well, yeah, maybe we'll play it more. Maybe I should just finish the demo. I know a few people have and ended up buying it. So, um, as far as like what I, because I really haven't played much like on like Game Pass or. You know, even on the PC, because now that I have the Steam Deck, I've just been playing Steam Deck games. But really, just kind of what I've been playing on there uh, is, you know, more Rotato, unlocking more characters. I can still just can't, you know, for the life of me, just get past like uh, Wave 17 or whatever it is. Like, I don't know what happens at 20 or is it just kind of like 
that's it. Like you've kind of beat it with that character at wave 20. Yeah, I have I no know, idea. I don't, I don't, know, don't know. I don't remember how far I haven't made it. I never paid that much attention. Yeah. Like I said, it because... was I picked up for the airplane ride to, to Arizona when I went and I just kind of played it on the switch. And like you were saying, the writing was really small, so it was kind of hard to read. You know, like, like, oh, what's this say? Like squinting. To look I at feel it. like it's, you know, I feel like playing it on Steam Deck, you know, again, with me, you know, having reading glasses and, you know, playing with the controller on the Steam Deck. It seems like, no, it's pretty good. Like, I feel like it's. You know, it, it, yeah, I have no issues with it. Maybe on my phone I would. I mean, that would be, you know, a little bit smaller screen because I do have the, uh, what do you call it? Like the, you know, the larger iPhone or whatever because my old eyes. But um, yeah, so no issues there, really. So I'll keep playing more because it because every time I play at Mayo and I just, you know, I'm going through so many levels, it'll say you leveled your character up. It'll just say leveled up. But I'm like, I don't don't know what that means, but. Uh, but that's the excitement for me for I really want to find out more about it. You know, I just I just keep going back in, finding more characters to play with. Some are like crazy. Some are well-rounded and some are like, hey, just go into this thing with, uh, you know, fist and half health, you know. <laughs> but again, that's how you start. Right. But then, yeah, eventually you get more abilities, more buffs, more of everything. That's that's where the fun is in this game. Um, and again, you don't have to choose any of those, man. Isn't that the best part, right? We're like, ah, fuck it. I'll just keep waiting for like something better, more epic. You know, it's more of a challenge yourself. Um, yeah, that's really what it, what it boils down to, I guess in the early game. Right. So, and that's kind of, I don't feel like it's like less, I'm getting less currency or, you know, like, oh, I better save it up for, you know, higher, higher waves and I'll need something more epic. Because you can always trade in other weapons or, like you said, combine them, you know, if you get the same something in the same common tier or, you know, an epic, especially that. Right. So that's when those those weapons become more powerful. So um, I had this one the other day where and again, I don't know if they're tied to certain characters or not, but it was where uh, where it's like, OK, the trees that you might get one or two different trees that grow where you can get these materials Right. They're around the map. And again, not very big maps. Right. So right. then I got this ability. It's like, OK, so every tree you destroy becomes a turret. So I'm like, oh, cool. Hopefully those yeah. trees are near each other. They can become turrets. And then let's say you've already got a turret that drops right from your uh, actual inventory or not from your inventory, but from one of your abilities where it's like, cool, because that does that right away as soon as you spawn in uh, or start the wave. So then it would be nice, Mail. You know, like, let's say if you say, OK, you've got a turret, but a new one spawns every I don't know, because what's what's a wave, right? It depends, right? The lower waves are like 10 or 15 seconds and some are yeah, 25, 30. Kind of they kind of keep going up and up. Yeah. So it'd be cool if you'd be like, all right, this one spawns every 15 seconds. So you might get two more turrets out of it. So, yeah, that would be that would be so much fun. So hopefully it does have that. That would be awesome. So, yeah. The game gets crazy. Very addicting. Very addicting on this team deck. Um, like I said, talked about Frostpunk. Ooh, kind of hard to read on there, man. But uh, I did fire up Dirt 4. I don't know. I just probably bought this game. I might have got it picked it up on CD keys some some time back. But I'll say this with the graphics mailing. Just something maybe more like you can explain where. And one thing I haven't figured out with the Steam Deck, I don't know, like, when I when I go ahead and launch the game in the Steam Deck, it's like, OK, like, can I change the graphic? Where do I change the graphic settings like from the Steam Deck itself? Because all these fucking YouTube videos that I watch, like, oh, this is where you can go and change it from, you know, 60 to 30 and maybe don't run it at 90 hertz or, or keep it there. But yeah, maybe lower the I, FPS. I, don't know. I, I just assumed it was in the game menus under your graphic settings. I just that's what I assumed. Yeah. Your resolution and your again, your, that your, your frame rate. Right. But no, a, there's I have a max frame rate. Yeah, and I might and I swear outside of like the plugin, what I talked about before about the the decky plugin, right, where it gives like a ton of options and total control over your Steam Deck. And I mean, these are all things you'd have to download outside of Steam. But um, yeah, but apparently there are these options. I just don't see where I'm supposed to do those. So that's something I'm still learning uh, along with the controller configurations, which I couldn't figure out on Frostpunk, by the way. Um, I just kind of had to learn it by pressing every button. So, but again, everything can be changed. Um, 
I just got to get in there and do more research, watch more videos, you know, on how to actually do all this stuff. Now, I know, I know everybody out there is thinking, well, Gunny, just why don't you just get your Xbox controller and just fire that up or whatever, Um, you know, play it via Bluetooth or whatever. I could probably do that, but I think I'd rather learn on the Steam Deck because it is like an Xbox PlayStation controller configuration. Well, more like the Xbox, right? The way the ABYX buttons are placed out. Uh, so yeah, I'll get, I'll get that all figured out here eventually. So, but yeah, pretty much, pretty much what I've been playing guys. Just a lot of steam that I can tinker in. Just just to jump back in, I forgot one game I I played last week at the end of the show and you kind of see me playing a little bit was that game we talked about at the end of that episode, that, uh, medieval top. Oh, the uh, Rustler game. Yeah. Oh, Rustler. Yeah. That game is hilarious. Like it, it very much, you know, it doesn't take itself serious. You know, it it starts yeah. off with like this little video scene and pretty funny, you know, he's like stealing horses and they call it like Grand Theft Horse, you know, instead of Grand Theft Auto. And then like the beginning, it shows it kind of like a, an intro scene and it's like rolling over top of the town and you see all this stuff. There's like this woman holding up a sign along the side of the road and it's got a little penis drawn on the back of it, you know, and there's there's a cow on top of a roof. There's a windmill with a guy sleeping on one of the fans driving around and it's doing like a rap so it's like a medieval time, you know, and there's a guy rapping and stuff, and you have this whole little song. And I think they said that, like, if it has stuff like uh, when you're on a horse, your radio stations are, are like a bard running behind you singing. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just little things like that. I've done a couple missions, and the first mission was like, you know, go beat this guy up, and it teaches you the combat. Then they're like, hey, go steal this horse. And you go and find this knight, and you steal his horse, and he chases you. And you go through this little uh, little barn, and it would change the look of your horse, and the cops don't know who you are right away, like how you would change a car, like in Grand Theft Auto or something like that. So you just run through with your horse, and your horse comes out looking different, and they just the cops lose you. They are like, well, "Where do you go?" You know, kind of thing. And then there's like uh, later on, I got a thing where you have to go kill and this other knight, and they give you like a crossbow, so they give you kind of different kind of weapons and stuff now. And and it's got it's gotten interesting. It's kind of entertaining, you know. It's just stupid humor, you know, and just whatever, but. It's it was good. It's a good six dollar game. If you're bored and feel like messing around with something kind of funny, I think like, at least last week it was on Steam for six dollars. Um, I don't know if it still is or not, but definitely worth the six dollars. I just kind of remember that. I was looking at my library, and uh, it reminds me of the game called American Fugitive that came out a couple years ago. Oh yeah, yeah. I I own that one as well. And just like a modern version of this game. Okay. I think I played American Fugitive. All right. Well, you know what time it is, Cunning. It's news time. Pity, 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 pity. Get into some Wake up, people. Mode. Big news here coming from Pal World. Of course, Pal World now has a Pokemon mod from the same creator who hit the headlines recently for adding famous Disney characters to Mortal Kombat. That's right. So, uh, there's that. If you want a mod, uh, you can get it. Okay. You can have Pikachu in the game, other team. And, uh, so yeah. And he added even, like, Team Rocket characters from the cartoon into the fucking game. <laughs> and the wow, that's pretty cool. And other news, and moving on to some more serious news, Mayo. Tencent, okay? Riot yeah, little, Games. Little company Tencent. A little indie, de- the indie publisher Tencent. We talked about their low dollar amount last week, I think. Yeah. Well, Riot Games, who is owned by Tencent... Is planning to lay off 530 employees, or about 11 percent of their staff globally. The online company said the online gaming company said on Monday, in a blog that included a letter to employees from CEO Dylan uh, Jadeja or Hadeja, however you pronounce it. Los Angeles-based Riot, whose popular titles include League of Legends, said teams outside of core development will see the largest impact from layoffs. Digital games publishers are struggling to grow as an audience holds off on buying expensive titles or stick to fewer games amid high inflation. Early last year, EA cut 6% of their staff and gave up some of their office space. Today, we are a company without a sharp enough focus. And simply put, we have too many things underway. Some of the significant investments we've made aren't paying off in the way we expected them to. Our costs have grown to the point where they are unsustainable, said the CEO. 
The changes will allow Riot to focus on its portfolio of live games, including League of Legends, Valorant, Team Fight Tactics, and Wild Rift. Um, it says here, Riot will immediately stop new game development under Riot Forge and drop some staff and features in Legends of Runeterra. Um, so there's that. There's that. I guess, I guess Tencent needs more money, huh? Yeah, the money's yeah. kind of tight. They got to, uh, I mean, would they lose a billion or no, they didn't lose a billion. They lost a lot of money, right? They lost so. a couple of billion, yeah, with uh, China announcing strict yeah, so. gaming rules or whatever. Yeah, they got to lay off a few people to make that money up. Oh, yeah. We as a consumer pay for it, yeah, along with the uh, employees. And other um, news. World works. The CEO of Power World developer Pocket Pair has stated that the game's artists are now receiving death threats. <laughs> And they have asked that people stop directing messages towards their studio staff. <laughs> Nintendo's ninjas. <laughs> Takuro Misobi, CEO of Pocket Pair, put out the tweet just below earlier today. Misobi's tweet first, firstly reveals that the artists working on Power World have received slanderous messages and comments about their work, some of which include death threats via Twitter. The CEO further writes that he is responsible for the production of Power World, and he is asking everyone to refrain from writing such, mes- such messages to the artist at Pocket Pair. The responses from predominantly Japanese Twitter users, oh, Nintendo, <laughs> appear to yeah. be in support of Misobi and the Power World artists. Uh, this all follows after Misobi dismissed concerns about Power World similarities to Pokemon. He said, quote, we have absolutely no intention of infringing upon the intellectual property of other companies, he wrote on Twitter. Uh, much has been made of Power World similarities to Pokemon. Even before Poke- Pocket Pair's game launched in early access last week, it had already been dubbed Pokemon with Guns by social media users. And now that the multiplayer game has launched, people are drawing direct conspir- comparisons between Power World's creatures and Pokemon. Twitter users have drawn comparisons between dozens of creatures in Power World and the Pokemon series, and developers have even weighed in on the debate. With Moonglow Bay de- director Zach Soares writing that, quote, The fact that Power World has similarities isn't due to some lack of creativity, but entirely due to the intent to stir controversy and marketing. So there's that. Dun dun dun! Power World in trouble! The Nintendo Ninjas are making death threats. Against the artist. (laughs) These are some hardcore Pokemon fans, right? Writing in death threats and slanderous remarks. Some real Pokemon fans. How dare you have my Pikachu in there? How fucking dare you, okay? In other news. Still about Pikachu. In other news. Xbox news here, kind of. So, uh... Okay, okay. So, Stryber who is the actor on the Halo TV series, okay? Pablo Schreiber is his name. Says that he argued against it and fought against it, okay? But I am who I am. I don't write the scripts. I only give my opinion, and it wasn't listened to, he says. That's in regards to Master Chief having a sex scene on the TV show Mayo, if you would have watched it, you would have oh, known this Mayo, okay? He had sex with the Covenant spy, Mackie, okay? And uh, Stryber reflects a lot of fan sentiment on the thorny issue of Big John's love life when the episode in question aired back in 2022. Fat communities weren't thrilled by the narrative decision, feeling it was a misunderstanding of the character from the games. If you Google Master Chief Sex Reddit, uh, you can see all the people are complaining about it. That is not canon, and we do not need to talk about it. Read a top's comment, a top comment on Reddit. Well, another one says, uh, so there's that. I mean, so who knows? It's whatever. I mean, the, the show's going to be different from the game, and it's going to continue being different. I don't expect season two to be anything better than than the game or, or whatever. Like, I mean, having played Halo in the past. And kind of knowing the story of Master Chief, from what I remember, he's not much of a character, man. You're just a guy with a gun, really, in a big fucking fucking power suit that you have. And, uh, I mean, that's really it, Mayo. I mean, like, you're a guy with a gun, you're killing aliens, and you're the guy they call in when the shit hits the fan, and 
and, and he shows up to save the day. I mean, what they want every episode to be a fucking huge battle with fucking aliens. Like, Never I mean, that, that, <laughs> that would not be much of a TV show, right, Gunny? I mean, if you just had like a, a big yeah. battle every it, episode. So did you watch the new trailer? Like, I only watched it once, but I guess my yeah. first initial impressions were and I never finished the first season. I was like, ah, whatever. I watched two episodes. It's OK. But in this new one, the new trailer, like I was getting like the extra drama vibes out of it. I understand, right? You got to have a story. And this is, you know, more about, you know, all the other characters involved as well. But I was like, man, like almost like a like a Battlestar Galactica. You guys remember that TV show? Like the, you know, just had the I mean, it was just dripping with drama. I don't know. Like, you know, there were some like, you know, action scenes in there as well. But I don't know. Maybe they should have just shown more of that. So we'll see. I'm sure I'll watch a couple episodes of the next season. Got to see how it goes. But yeah, I don't know about this sex scene or what's going on with that or yeah, what his problem was or maybe his girlfriend didn't like it or wife, you know, so. In other news, we want some more news here, gentlemen. Darfield is getting the biggest update yet, Mayo. All right. Biggest okay. update yet. I got patch notes for you, Mayo. Okay. If you are a Starfield early access or whatever Steam beta fucking guy, you got this patch four days ago. Listen, they did a lot of shit, okay? That's the one with a hundred fixes. That's a lot. But it's not dude, the right? biggest one yet, right? Or something. This is, this is a lot of fixes, man. Like they did a bunch of shit with the lighting this says, a bunch of the crashing issues, a bunch of the s- skills they fixed. They fixed some power, some outpost shit. Uh, but yeah, it's a lot of patch notes. So it's coming soon. It's being tested right now, apparently, in the beta test. But yeah. Yeah, I couldn't, get my sh- I couldn't get my ship to land on the landing pad, so hopefully that gets fixed. One of my planets. Okay. okay. That little game and set in the Harry Potter universe, Hogwarts Legacy, managed to sell 22 million copies in 2023 mail. Best selling game of the year. It beat out Call of Duty in sales. That is that is fucking crazy. You know when's the last time any game has had top year sales besides a Rockstar game or an Activision game? You know what year it was, Mayo? Uh, I'm trying to think back what the last game even was and then trying to go from there. 2018. Do you think it was 2018, Gunny? I'm just, that's just a random guess, man. Okay, that's a, that's a guess. What about you, Mayo? Give me a year, Mayo, when you think... A game that was not an Activision Call of Duty title or a Rockstar published game beat like got like get, got most sales in a year. Um, I, I almost like Gunny's idea. Twenty eighteen and got a. It seems like a good year for gaming. I don't know. That's no, you guys are both wrong. You're off by ten years. Two thousand eight. Wow. <laughs> year of Xbox. Two, 2008 was the last year a game that was not published by Activision or Rockstar was a game that was number one selling of the year. Boy, what? Like every year it's been Call of Duty or fucking GTA or fucking Red Dead or some shit like something that Rockstar released or something that call of duty yeah 2008 was i no, well, i don't know if because halo like before xbox bought them but i'm just thinking of big games but um oh may, uh counter-strike i don't know when did that come out mm, counter-strike's old but i don't think it's yeah. that long ago yeah that's crazy right because like, i mean not... rockstar would be my call of duty and and this little game that got canceled and they didn't even get mentioned at the game awards <laughs> didn't even get like an honorable mention or nothing it's the one that sold the most right and they can give a fuck about game awards right they're like whatever we made all we our money, money that's all we care about we, we got money but this we're gonna make brothers, a second one hell yeah let's do it warner brothers interactive entertainment president david haddad confirmed the numbers when speaking with variety he said while the project did have the benefit of coming from an established ip there's still impressive numbers Warner Brothers Games adds that around 2 million copies were sold, Mayo, during December holiday season alone. Uh, He said, 
It was the best-selling game of the year in the entire industry worldwide. And that's a position that's typically, that's typically is held by one of these incumbent sequel games. And we're so proud that we've been able to break into the top ranks. Okay? Yeah. Last time uh, that a game wasn't the first game on the list since, like, that wasn't a Call of Duty or a Rockstar game. Team oh, Fortress. 2009. <laughs> 2009. Holy what fuck. Game? What was the, yeah, what was uh, it? I don't know. I gotta look that up. Let's look it up. Thinking 2009 best selling game. Was it Team Fortress, right? What else came out with that? No, I don't know. Years those came Team out. Team Fortress has always been free. I thought it was a free to play kind of battle royale. Not a battle royale, but. Uh, yeah. no, that, that was Call of Versus... Duty. Look, look, 2008 in video games. So the best-selling video game in 2008 was the Wii Play. The Wii Play? Okay. I was playing the the, the Wii Bowling. Wait, wait. Best Didn't selling that come game with the Wii? Yeah. <laughs> that's why. Is it how that's why. I guess that if you resold why. it and had to buy it, I don't know. Uh, that's yeah, why it was how, the best-selling game. Hey, man. Game. Was fucking, it built into the box? What's up? Uh, listen, motherfucker. Okay, do you want some numbers? A yeah. uh, best-selling game. Okay, I got here uh, numbers. It was Mario Kart Wii. That was the best-selling game for 2008. Grand Theft Auto 4 was third place, and Wii Fit was second place. <laughs> what Mario Kart Call it, was it? Uh, Mario Kart Wii. Yeah, that's what that's, that's just what it was called. Mario Kart Probably Wii. a launch title. I was thinking Mario Kart 8 in my mind already. <laughs> I played Call long. of Duty World War. I think it's still hanging around. We, we Fit was number two. Grand Theft Auto 4 was number three. Uh, Super Smash Brothers Brawl was number four. And Call of Duty World at War was number five that year. I did play and World then, at War on, on the Wii. And then, like I said, the year after that was Modern I Warfare did. 2. I think I got it from, that was Game Crazy at the time. Yeah, the year after that, best-selling video games were Call of Duty: Modern Warfare Two, and then, yep. and then of course, Wii was like on top of the list for everything. But uh, Call of the Duty Wii was, was number hot one back then. Call of Duty was number one, man. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 fucking crazy. Like, <laughs> like that, that, that's that's nuts. Since two thousand eight, guys, yeah, no yeah. game has beat this shit. Wow. No, no game has beat Call of Duty since 2008. And yet, they can't even get a mention. <laughs> oh, damn. They can't even get a mention. But uh, anyways, with this being said, uh, they, they also, uh, Warner Brothers added that Hogwarts Legacy has, in total, about 707 million hours played as players sought after replete play- playthroughs with different houses. Additionally, uh, Wizards, or would-be Wizards have poured over 819 million potions mayo, plucked 1.3 billion plants, saved 593 million beasts, and beaten just less than 5 billion evil wizards. Hogwarts Legacy also launched for the most platforms on February 10th. Uh, So there's that. Um, But, 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 the the, the project manager said, we don't have any particular announcements. Ex- on exactly how and when the Quidditch game is going to come to the market, but we are working to get it designed in a way just to delight fans. Uh, so there's that. So they're gonna they're gonna add the Quidditch game into the game. They said, but they also said that uh, don't don't be surprised if another game in this universe comes out. <laughs> yeah, it's like a Quidditch, right? They're gonna do something with it soon. I hope they release yeah, a DLC. Yeah, it was a I think it's going to be this year. Game, right? Wasn't it supposed to be a Quidditch, Quidditch supposed to be like a standalone game? Yeah. Yeah. I hope it's a DLC for this. But it's whatever. In other news, Power World Mail. Okay, listen here, man. Okay? Okay? Listen. Okay. I'm listening. Are you listening? Mm-hmm. Okay. Pocket Pair Community Manager, Bucky, okay, is trying to clarify some things for you. Okay, Bucky, please clarify something okay. for me. Bucky said the following. I trust anybody with that name. He said, or she said, I don't know. They or, or said, her. the versions of the game are not the same between Steam and Xbox. There seemed to be some confusion that Steam and Xbox are missing features. 
that isn't entirely true. Some features may be slightly different or have different value, but other issues like the missing exit game button, etc. are not a result of an older build. These are separate issues. The Steam and Xbox versions will likely never have identical version numbers until crossplay between the platforms become available, because at that point, they will be the same game internally. Again, that doesn't mean that Xbox is necessarily behind or anything. They're just fundamentally two different versions of the game because the architecture on the Xbox is different. Okay? Okay? Okay, listen. Uh, Some of these things will take extra time. Okay? We're really at the mercy of certification here. We're desperately trying to speed this up. They added in another reply that there's a hot fix currently sitting in the Microsoft certification queue. So there, people are complaining that some of the things on on the Steam version, like you can like name your 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 character, like your little creatures, you can name them. There's an exit game button on the screen. There's a fucking uh, like a few little changes to the game, like little quality of life changes. On top of like the uh, server thing, you know where. On Xbox, if you're playing through the Game Pass, even on PC, like I have, uh, you can only co-op with up to four players, I think. But on the Steam version, you can set up a server, Mayo. Yeah, and dedicated. Up, yeah, and have up to 32 players go into that lobby or whatever. So people are saying, like, well, the Xbox is a fucking hobo box. Like, like wh- why don't I have a server, Gunny? What the fuck? And people are mad. But these guys are saying, like, hey, man, look, it's not our fucking fault, okay? This shit just has to go through a process, and Xbox takes a while to approve this shit, so you fuck off and wait. Yeah. Okay, I like, mean, to me, it's like the Xbox people are all liking it. I think it's the PS5 people. They're going, yeah, this yeah game's dumb. they're the salty ones. It, it's dumb. It's different than we the We don't Steam want that version. game anyway. We don't want it on our right, right. box. It looks too much like Pokemon to be on our PS5. Yeah. Yeah, so they'll get it eventually. I remember, I remember Dead Cells was like that for the longest time. Like it would always release stuff on the PC first, and then it would come out on the console version later. Yeah, so it sounds yeah. like it's kind of like they all they'll kind of bring this stuff out on PC, and then you know do whatever they need to do to get a patch into the console since it does use a different yeah. architecture. Right, and I noticed like since X, the Xbox One days or whatever, I don't know if it's just the teams or whatever where they're more. I guess they're more eager to get early access games on there, kind of like uh, PUBG was. Yeah. Where they were like, the, however it worked out, Mayo, at the time, where they were like, let's put it on Xbox, yay. And then I remember list, watching some of the developers where they were talking about, you know, they'd have, they'd be in a room with like four different PCs, like trying to cooperate with each other. Like, okay, like it's not like the same, you know, servers or anything like that. But, you know, just trying to get things working on Xbox like they would be on PC. Again, different different build right but man that game was ass on xbox <laughs> me and jesus trying to play it like what happened all oh, my screen went black you know yeah but i still see you standing there you're moving around but yeah but my screen's black man that's the xbox way you know these were on hobo xbox ones you know so yeah at that time it was crazy so people are asking questions will we see a power world ps5 version the developer answered we don't have plans for this at the moment but we'll consider it during development. People ask, when will Power World be releasing? Of course, early access, January 19th. It will cost twenty nine ninety nine. Will new PALs and areas be added to Power World? Yes. Power World will continue to be updated during and after early access. We will show a roadmap of a year one plan early after release. Is there PvP in Power World? It says here, PvP will not be supported at initial release. However, we're currently testing PvP internally and experimenting with different approaches. We want to find the right type of PvP that fits Power World, and when it is ready, we will share the news with you all. Is Power World on Xbox Game Pass for PC? Yes, Power World is on the Xbox Game Pass and the Xbox Game Pass for PC. It says here, does Power World support crossplay between Xbox and Steam Mail? Not at launch, but we are working to make this a possibility as soon as possible. It says here, Will Power World support more languages? We don't have any plans to add more languages for this initial release, but we would like to support more as we continue to develop the game. And yes, it has controller support. Yes, it can be played offline by yourself or with your friends online. 
And it says here, you can play it with up to three friends by simply starting a multiplayer game and inviting them for player co-op. Beyond this, you can create a dedicated server on Steam, which will allow for up to 32 players to play in the same world and create guilds together. And this says here, so those will provide the tools for that. It says here, can I use my single player character in multiplayer too? At the moment, partially yes. Your character is bound to your world and is not shared across servers or single player. However, if you are the host of a co-op game, then you can switch between single player or multiplayer freely, but your guests will not be able to do this. We plan to provide a server save transfer method later on during development. Does Power World support modding? Does it support Steam Workshop? Steam Workshop support will not be supported straight away, but we plan to add it after launch. Power World is made in Unreal Engine 5, and we look forward to seeing what sort of mods people come up with. It says here, is this game a scam? Or is it a money-making MMO or virtual currency game? It is not a scam, the developer says, and will definitely be released <laughs> on January 19th. Power World is a typical Steam game. You buy it once and it's yours forever. While we may consider expansions after the full release, that is a conversation we will all have together as a community when the time comes. So there's that. Yeah, so yeah, get your pal bucks early. Pal bucks. Get your pal so, bucks, nineteen ninety nine. Start get eight hundred pal bucks. Start fucking, you know. That's not in there, guys. Oh, I'm just saying. Oh, just oh, a also joke. news about Pal World, man. In case you may not have heard. Okay, Pal World. Okay. Within just a few days after its debut on Steam, hit the highest number of any paid game on Steam ever. Uh, ever. Let me. Wow. Let, wow. let me rephrase that, Mayo. Ever. Ever. <laughs> One million one hundred twenty-one thousand two hundred and twenty-six. Okay. That's but huge. That's where, but but okay. So uh, so yeah. It says here Cyberpunk uh, is one point five million concurrent players. One point oh five. Uh, so say here. Oh no! It says here that. PUBG had the highest ever. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I was going to say PUBG and Counter Strike, right? But I think why, they, the why, why do they claim the highest ever if PUBG had the highest ever? Uh, hmm. I don't know. I guess it's the highest right now, but not ever. Why do they say ever? Like, what the fuck? This is bullshit. You got to tell me one thing and tell me another thing. It says here PUBG reached 3.25 million. Has anyone ever beat that on a paid game? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, That's why I thought it was the highest. You're looking at player game. counts. What website though? I'm gonna look on Steam. Look, uh, it says, look at Steam charts. I think Steam charts. Was yeah, I was gonna that. say Steam charts, right? So it says here, PUBG reached 3.5 million on January 13, 2018. CS CSGO, CSGO 1.8 million, and then Power World is number three at 1.5. So I mean, they're up there in the top three or whatever. You know, That's a good achievement. So, but like they're not even, I, I well I guess they're halfway to PUBG. Yeah, they're they're like halfway to PUBG. Yeah, PUBG is way higher than Counter Strike in that list. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at that list and yeah, and you got Lost Ark and Dota Two, Elden Ring almost almost hit a million. I'm surprised Cyberpunk is that high, dude. One point one million fifty four thousand players. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot of players, dude. Like that game was popular as fuck. Like. Elden Ring is right underneath that at 953,000. And then even like New World is up there. That's crazy. Hogwarts Legacy is up there. And it's Hogwarts Legacy is still higher than Baldur's Gate. That's crazy. Yeah, it is. Now that game, how the fuck did that game get no mentions at the Game Award, dude? How, Mayo? Uh, I don't know. That's what I was saying. How the fuck did it not get mentioned? Man, I don't know. Well, too Everybody much else? controversy, Jesus. Too much controversy. And. I think we said it before, but Jeff Keighley even said, well, I don't vote for the games. That's all from the, the, uh, what is it? The gaming media, right? Do we even know who they were? Like who, I don't know. It, it, does it even matter really? Like the list of, do they all cooperate with each other? How does that even work? Yeah. And other news moving they, on now. Let's move on now. Honey. Sony CEO. Okay. Says PlayStation gaming future will be on the PC the mobile and cloud mail. You hear that? You hear that? 
Yep. Uh huh. PC, mobile, and cloud. Okay. Okay. In an interview with Norges Bank Investment Management, the Sony CEO talked about where he sees the future of gaming for PlayStation going in both the short and near term. It will be ubiquitous, Joshida said. Whether there is wherever there is computing, users will be able to play their favorite games seamlessly. While PlayStation will remain our core product, we will expand our gaming experiences to the PC, the mobile, and the cloud. Speaking of the cloud and non-traditional gaming, Yoshida was asked about the movement towards subscription services for gaming. It's something that while he sees the value in, he doesn't believe it's a catch-all solution for gamers. He said, quote, People usually play only one game at a time. So the all-you-can-eat type of many games may be not so valuable compared with video game streaming services. So we'll have a kind of balanced or hybrid service on PlayStation Network, a subscription as well as a paper content. Uh, yeah. And he was asked about the recent Microsoft acquisition of Activision Blizzard and how it will impact the direction of PlayStation. So yeah, without giving much away, Yoshida said that Sony will continue to work to give PlayStation members the ability to play the best games with the best options. He said, quote, healthy competition is necessary for the game industry to grow. And at Sony, we believe it is important to provide gamers with different options to play. So we'll continue our efforts to achieve this. That's right, man. You hear that? That's a fucking boss speaking right there. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Big, that's good corpo speak. Big PlayStation boss. Yeah. Hey, Call of Duty's not going anywhere, man. It's staying right where it's at. It's even going on the cloud on a on the Switch too. You play it on a Steam Deck. <laughs> so the play it on your phone. <laughs> In other news, your Tesla. speaking of, of expensive things and money, you guys, I know you're wanting this mail. The Apple Vision Pro pre-orders are now live ahead of its... $3,000 headset? This is ahead of its February 2nd launch. $3,400 used. iPhone makers highly anticipated mixed reality headset. The Vision Pro's product page reveals configurations, pricing, and accessories while a new spec page clarifies answers to some lingering questions we've all had. So, getting all the extra trimmings with your Vision Pro will set you back a pretty penny. And that's on top of the $3,499 starting price. For starters, Mayo, upgrading your Pro Vision storage to 512 gigabytes sees the price jump to $3,699. Or, I know you, Mayo... You're not going to want 512 no, gigs. That, that's hobo stuff. You want the one terabyte model. Well, yeah. And that's going to, that's going to, of course, cost you $3,899. The base model, which is $3,499, comes with the hobo 256 gigs of storage. But, Mayo, I know you're going to want to travel with this. I know you. You're a traveling, worldly man. Well, yeah, especially my VR. I love to travel with my yeah. VR. Yeah. This is not. This is VR, AR, mail. Okay, mixed yeah. reality, mail. Mixed reality. Listen, mail. I know you like to travel. You're gonna wear these everywhere. And you're gonna get on a plane or something. Okay, you're gonna need somewhere to put these in. You're gonna want a travel case. Okay, that travel case is gonna cost you hundred ninety nine dollars. Okay, but when you're traveling, mail, what do you need? You need a battery. You need you need something to power this thing all day. You know. So you're gonna want. The Vision Pro external battery pack. Okay. This is $49.95. This is a battery holder that you clip on your belt. Okay. And mm -hmm. and if you wear glasses, you can uh you get the, the fucking the, the the fucking whatever readers. It costs ninety nine dollars. And if you want prescription lenses, it's one forty nine. Okay. And you attach these these things inside with like a magnetic thing into your, your headset. Now, if you want to add warranty, I know you do, Mayo. <laughs> That's $499 for two-year warranty. <laughs> cool. Okay. And it costs you a console. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, but even if you have warranty, uh, each repair will cost you $299. So, I mean, I, I don't even know what the warranty is for at that point. Right. Uh, it doesn't guess, make sense. I, I guess it'll cost $500. Maybe that's the minimum about, amount. Yeah. 
Um, Devil's uh, in the details on that one. All right, listen, listen, Mel. Okay, no, okay. Now you're you you, you ask, honey. You said I don't even know why. You know, it's two ninety nine for a repair. Why would I get this four hundred ninety nine dollar two year warranty coverage? Well, let me tell you why, Gunny and Mayo. Okay, if you have cracked cover glass, which is the the whole thing is made of glass, but if you have cracked cover glass without a coverage plan, okay, is seven hundred ninety nine dollars to repair. <laughs> and that probably without, doesn't include shipping, handling. Okay. Yeah, and uh, everything else is called other damage. Okay, other damage costs. Twenty four hundred dollars to repair. Jeez. So, if you don't have this insurance mail for five hundred dollars for two years, and you drop your headset while you're jogging with it, right, and you fall on your face, and you break the glass, and you break something else on it, you're gonna be in for a bill of thirty two hundred dollars. Oh. <laughs> Might as well just. Buy, you're gonna buy a brand new one at buy, that point. Buy a new one, yeah. Yeah. But, but listen, if you pay the five hundred. If you play, if you pay the five hundred dollar Apple fee for the Apple Plus thing insurance, okay. Listen, the two ninety nine repair fee is unlimited mail. You could be as carefree as you want. You could, you could fucking run into a tree with that fucking shit on your face. You can take, fall off your back deck. Up, take off the headset and just throw it against the wall. Yeah, when you're taking it off every day. Three hundred dollars. Who the fuck cares? You can drive the Camaro it. Hundred and eighty yeah, miles an hour, throw it out the window. In the bucket, yeah. Throw it out, yeah. Throw it out the window when you get tired of using it. Oh fuck! <laughs> I need to go pick that up because I need to Is take it. What's in for the repair. what's the loss fee or whatever if you lose it? Yeah, I, I don't know. It probably is not a loss fee. I don't know, man. That, like, I just don't have it. It got stolen. I don't know. That's crazy. Though. In other news, uh, what other news do I have here? In other news. Other news. Uh, no more news. No more. No more news. I think we're done. We're done. Oh, wait, no. no, no, no. Xbox news. Oh, Xbox, Xbox just yeah. had. Xbox just had their developer direct. Okay. They did. Did you guys watch it? I listened I to part it, of it. I then it I went back and watched. Watched it. I haven't. I didn't watch it all. Nothing. I, I was. I was impressed with the games I saw. Actually, they said they showed Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. Looks really good. A, A young Indiana. Sanua What's Saga. that, Troy Baker? He, he Hellblade Two, like, and Ara: A History Untold. Jesus, that, that's a Jesus game right there. Yeah, that Ara uh, game, really? Yeah. yeah it well, it's like, an RTS. It looks, like Civ, it looks like Civilization yeah, Five definitely. or Civilization Six. Yeah. A lot like Civilization, really. Pretty much. Oh, it's shit, usually not something right. I'm into, or I have never gotten into. I cool. I don't know how to play those games. The fuck do you know how to play these games easy? You just click shit till you figure it out. I, that's what I was thinking. Like, I don't know. Like, should I just do that and just get into an RTS and just start clicking shit? It's not like the old Company Heroes game where you got three different squads. All right, I'll just move three different squads. But this looks more complicated. Avowed is launching fall 2024. Hellblade 2 launching May 21st. Visions of Mana launching summer of 2024. History Untold launching fall 2024. Indiana Jones launching 2024. No actual date, but it says 2024. Yeah, I'm assuming that one's going to be late. But that one, Jesus, that one looks really, really good. It, it, I have seen trailers for it. Yeah, it does look good. I have seen the trailers. That's the one that seems to be like the most shown right now. I see it. I've seen it like on Facebook, on Instagram. It's like Bethesda's pumping out marketing for it, which is kind of cool. That's a big game, dude. It looks like a big game, right? Yeah, it looks like it's a big game. Like a, like a big AAA development thing. Like, who's making that? What What did they work on before this? Who is it? I don't. I don't even know. Remember? Who is making this shit? Machine Games. What a fucking what a they Todd made? Howard production. Machine Games. Oh, they made all the Wolfenstein's. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. You guys played the last one. I think I only played a little bit of it. I didn't like the last one. No. Uh, what was the last one? Was that the old, the old the sisters? One? The yeah, yeah. The two sisters. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember you guys played it on the uh, the launcher too, which kind of sucked. Oh yeah, we had it. we had a gun that, that stupid, but that's the launcher crap. Yeah. I yeah. That. yeah. Oh, I've only I used that thing that. one time. I was like, ah, fuck that. That's the one time I had it, and I think I installed it after that. Fuck that shit. Yeah. They gotta get rid of all these fucking launchers, dude. 
Just just have one launcher, man. We well, remember now everything's on beam and stuff. So now we have a game pass. So we don't have to worry about it. Yeah. So I'm looking at another piece of news here. Game developer Farhan Noor, who has been tracking job cuts dating back to the start of 2023 mail on video games, layoffs.com. Okay. So legit website. Well, they look at layoffs. He estimates that around 10,500 game industry employees were laid off in 2023. And less, man, less than a month into 2024, 3,000 jobs have already been cut from the industry. Okay? So, um, it says here, speaking anonymously to GameIndustry.biz, senior industry figures warn that more tough times are in store for the market due to continued high interest rates and an overabundance of new releases and cautious investors. If 2023 was the year of layoffs, 2024 will be the year of closures, according to one CEO of a public company. Not just developers, but publishers, media, service companies. There are just too many unprofitable businesses in the video game space, they added, and we are looking at up to two years of pain. One publisher boss said, too many games were greenlit in 2020 and 2021. We need to get to pre-pandemic levels in terms of release schedules. And that's probably going to take another two years. You can already see publishers signing fewer games. That's happening everywhere. The stores are saturated, not just Steam. And the games just aren't delivering at the levels they were before. Says here, the latest GDC State of the Game Industry survey found that around a third of developers were impacted by layoffs at the workplace over the last 12 months that ended in October 2023. Asked how concerned they were about layoffs over the following 12 months to October 2024, 14% of the 3,000 plus respondents said they were very concerned and 16% said that they were somewhat concerned and 26% said they were slightly concerned. Okay. So, yeah. Says here, studios grew too quickly during the pandemic, and people are spending less money on games during a cost of living crisis. The bubble is sadly bursting, and I hope he creates new startups that revolutionize how we develop games and set a precedent for larger studios to follow by. And then another person wrote, The layoffs are concerning because they do not seem to be following the typical cyclical, cyclical trend of layoffs after a project ships. Not that that was great either, but it's hard to predict these days where and when a layoff might happen. So what do you think, guys? you think we're going to see more layoffs this year? you think these guys are correct? Yeah, I mean, there's been a lot already. I mean, it seems like it's all the time. That's all we're hearing about is layoff by this developer, layoff by that, you know, publisher. Since last year. But I always think like this, guys. I always think outside of the economy, which I don't know much about as far as economics, um, you know, other than what they tell me on TV or, you know, via little YouTube video clips that I watch. But anyway, I always think like this, where I think like, all right, so like Destiny and they're coming out with the perfect shape or whatever the fuck DLC they're coming out with, recently bought by Sony. Uh, again, perfect not think, just thinking outside of that business model, or I could think, well, what the hell? Like, they're working on new content. Maybe not every person at the company. Why the fuck would they do layoffs? That doesn't, you know what I mean? You gotta, you gotta it takes the employees to make the money. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. But then you could take something like Riot or I don't know, whoever else. And you think, well, you know, if they're not really working on something, I can see, you know, a business manager higher up, you know, kind of coming in and cleaning house. And, you know, I always look at it this way, like we just need to make more money for our investors. Time to go, you know. But I understand, too, at the same time, you know, whatever interest rates and the, you know, shit's expensive. And I, I don't know it. I don't know it, but it does kind of get me where all I can say is like, don't hire so many fucking people, you know, if you're not going to utilize all of them. Right. Cause it just, it just hurts the, you know, the people, right. The, the employees, but yeah, I don't know about the business side of things or yeah. Who knows? That's my rant. Laying yeah, people I, off is not I don't good. know, man. It's not good. And, that, and I'm with you there, Gunny. Like you're right. The, the people making the games are the ones that make the money, right? Like, well, then how do we get these games? You know what I yeah, mean? Like you, you, can't, can't, you can't just have a bunch of bosses with no one to boss. Yeah, you need, you need <laughs> artists. You need engineers. You need yeah, a bunch of a bunch of bosses sitting around in an office. Hey, how come the game hasn't shipped, guys? 
Yeah. Uh, Come on. Well, we just fired all of our artists and we fired <laughs> some of our writers and we fired some of the designers and coders. Uh, I think we fired all, all of them. them. Why did we fire all, them? All, all the we... manufacturing or whoever they had to make, you know, make the game, whatever. Yeah. The production <laughs> artists, the musical artists. Yeah. I guess we'll have no music in the game. Come on. Who fired them all? Uh, you did, sir. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm going to fire you now. Fuck, get out of here. <laughs> Tell me that crap. <laughs> I need to what, do they call that? <laughs> what do they call that? Trim the fat? Yeah, that's what I did. I trimmed the fat. So now oh, what does yeah, that do, yeah. Jesus? You know what that does? That'll take like the two, uh, you know, two of the fucking artists, in- engineer artists, whatever what they're called, right? In the video game space yeah. of things. Where it's like, oh, well, now they're going to get more money, right? Because they survived the cut. So only, I mean, I guess it does benefit them, right? But not the other ones that got let go. Now they but need to go you, find another job. You, you remember how back in the day, like, well, when I say back in the day, I don't really mean like that crazy back in the day. But like, I remember like in the early 2000s, in the, two, in the 2010s, we would always hear about like this, this person is moving to EA or this guy, this guy just got hired by Microsoft, or this guy just got hired by Sony. They're very and competitive nowadays, back then. Very competitive. Nowadays, but no, no, listen, back then people would make a name for themselves, and they could make a name for themselves because they were so good at what they did. But like nowadays, you don't hear that a lot. You don't hear like, like oh, EA just hired this crazy cool guy, like, like this fucking guy that knows his shit about games. About like It's rare that you hear that nowadays, right? Like, about yeah. the only person I ever really hear about is fucking Hideo Kojima. Like, what happened to all the other people that were big guys making games that were, like, making these huge fucking, like, crazy games? Like, you think Gears of War, you think that one dude. What's his name? The fuck's uh, his name, Gunny? Oh, I, I know who you're talking about. Um, Yeah, I follow him oh, on the Clippy X. B. Clippy yes. B. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, him. You think about him, right? Like, you think Gears of War, you think that guy. You think fucking Metal Gear Solid, you think Hideo Kojima. You know, you, you bring up these names and you know what they made or whatever, and you know who they are. But nowadays, I don't feel like if you work in the gaming industry, like if you were to get into that career as a career that you want to do, and I understand why you'd want to do it because it's cool, right? I don't know if you could make a name for yourself that big unless you just went like fucking indie and made something completely by yourself. Like like the guy who made a uh, well, that, fucking, like, that forager game the guy made it in yeah, brazil but, but by even those, those people don't really make it like their name isn't really known you know like yeah the exactly guy that made, like, how many people know the name of the guy that made fortnite you know like or or yeah. even now like that, who made not, minecraft. Not fortnite, uh, minecraft that's what i was gonna oh, say right notch yeah, well not right. his real name but yeah i know his yeah, real name right. Tag. like how come no one ever hired him to go work at another studio like even though he's worth two billion dollars probably doesn't have to work ever like yeah he might not want to well, I mean, he might not want to, but I mean, I think mean, about at, him. Like, could somebody yeah. offer him enough money to be like, "Look, dude, we'll just offer you two million dollars, and all you have to be for our fucking game is an advisor. Just fucking, we'll just go on the news and we'll say you're you're advising us on the direction of this game or whatever the fuck." Like, if you think of think of like the Power World people right now, where to take all the money they made. Okay, listen, all right, listen, we're gonna do fucking math here, motherfucker, you sons of bitches. All right. We got a calculator out here, okay? If they sold five million copies at twenty nine ninety nine, okay? Well, you take that means game gets that means okay, okay. We'll multiply it by thirty. Okay, okay. Minus thirty, right? Yeah, whatever. minus thirty percent. Whatever. All right, hold on. Doing math now. <laughs> <laughs> five million. He's copies. using his toes, guys. He's using toes, all of them. Okay. And yeah, I'm rounding these off. numbers up. Shoes are off. Okay. Listen, even with the 30% cut that Steam takes, that developer has over $100 million. $100 million. You're telling me that, that wouldn't it be smart for them to just go and be like, hey, uh, Notch, we know you worked on Minecraft and you made it and you created it by yourself and like you made this shit for your kids as a, like a <laughs> stupid little fucking toy for them to play when you were busy and it became huge. Can you just advise us here? We'll pay you like $3 million right now, cash. And all you have to say is that you are advising us every once in a while on the direction of the game. That's it. Wouldn't that be smart to do? But you don't hear that. You don't hear that nowadays. It's like nowadays all these developers are nobody. Like, they're just nobody. 
It seemed like a rough market, really. I mean, you always hear people moving around. Yeah, it's like no one like, like it's you finish a project. Like every, you yeah, like you finish hire. project. You, yeah, you finish you're pretty much for hire gone, these days. Yeah, I mean it. Ha- it was that way, Mayo. It was like I mean that's it. Kind of was that way for almost, you know a lot of your almost you know, like your grunts in a way. Like you pick up a, yeah. a, a project, and then when you finish that project, you just move on and find another one. Really. Right, that's how it goes. You but know, like, that's how it goes with why, some of these games. Unless you're with a rock star, or but why can't these people make a name for themselves? Like, just like you're this fucking guy, you know? Like, and, well, maybe they, maybe behind the scenes more so, you know? Like maybe us, you know, don't yeah. hear the names, but maybe there's probably ones that are probably like more sought after, you know? Like, oh, hey, I'm I sure, really like know, a, I really, hey, really I know this stuff, you know? Like, I'm the fucking guy that really made GTA fucking six. Okay, I'm the guy that made Red Dead Redemption 2. <laughs> like, I'm the main fucking director guy. Like, I know what the fuck I'm doing, all right? Maybe I'm sure him, he's yeah. worth a lot of money, right? I'm, I'm sure, sure he's is. worth a lot, and he can go like, to EA or Microsoft and get top yeah, dollar. And, and get, yeah, get hired for a shitload of money, yeah. But, like, why? But, like, it's just to me, it seems like... like, like Here's, the, the gaming industry seems like a career that no one's going to want in the future. Like... It's almost like those, those, like people, like remember how people would always talk shit, like, oh, a blue collar job is a bad job. You you shouldn't want to be like that trash guy picking up trash or whatever, you know, like that like, truck driver shit, like me. Yeah, yeah, that fucking truck driver. You you see that guy over there? You're gonna you're gonna end up like him if you don't go to college. You know, like fuck off, dude. But like like it seems like developers are gonna be that way because if everyone wants to be a developer. And developers are just getting fired left and right. Then there's too many developers, isn't there? If, yeah. And if the you know, industry says, add. if the industry says there's too many developers and we're firing them all, where the fuck are they going to work? They're going to go work for Apple making a fucking iPhone. I mean, what are they going to do? Or if you fire half, right? The other half have to work twice as hard. Is my point. Um, <laughs> and I'll, I'll just add a little, a little more fear to this conversation since we're going, we're going down the in the depths here, and that is the fact that. You know, reading a couple articles today, Jesus, about, you know, the future of video games and development and stuff like that. Um, and that was with AI. I mean, there's not much to yeah. it as we speak, but there's there's less human jobs right there yeah, in the future big time. when it comes to whether it's music, TV shows, video games, anything in that digital space. Yeah, it's going to so take over thing. jobs, right? Like, like, that's a big problem right now. Right now in this. Like, I don't understand. Like, it's like almost like the world is going backwards, kind of, like, in a way. You know, because us, well, me growing up in my generation, for sure my generation, everyone that I know wants a job doing, like, computer shit. Or yeah, something I, like I don't computers. see anything wrong with that, right? Like, I think that's There's good, nothing that... wrong with it, but listen, what happens when AI takes over all those jobs? Yeah, that's going to be, be there's gonna, there's gonna be a need. There'll be a lot of pain, you know, for families. There's going to and... be... There's going to be a need for blue collar workers to repair the fucking server buildings for the machines to fucking make the shit for the machines to use to build the machines, you know, because, yeah, you can have an AI that can run a fucking program to load 50,000 trailers at Mayo's warehouse in two hours. But if that shit breaks, then you got to have a guy that goes in there and fixes it, right? Like. So like, like, it's weird. Like, it's like almost like the world is going to have to go almost backwards a little bit and say like, oh, well, now you're going to have to go to college to get a fucking degree in mechanics to fucking learn how to fix this shit. You know, it's it's like weird, man. I don't get it. Like, I think AI is going to fuck things up, dude. I think. I don't know how it's going to go myself. I'm a little more optimistic, but um, and I don't look at it like as a boomer and go, well, that's just terrible. Uh, what I don't think it's terrible. I think it's. It's interesting to me, and I, I want to see where it takes us. I don't want it to take the replacement of, of jobs that people have, but it, it's humans. an unfortunate future that it will. I, I don't know how many, but I, I do want to see what it, it creates. Will. You know what? Yeah. What we what we it'll program cool, it to create? I think, yeah, it'll it'll create some cool shit. I bet, but at the same time, like you just said, it is going to take people's jobs. It yeah. is going to do. We're going to see that, gonna, right? It, so yeah. yeah, I don't know, Mel. I'm scared, Mel. The future's scary. Solar flares coming. It's coming, man. It's Solar flares. All the radios, Mel. You're gonna have to do everything manually. Load everything manually. Oh, I know. Mel, right? 
What happens when solar flare hits and it kills the AI that's running our shit? Is that a good thing nobody, or bad? And then, then nobody knows how to run the shit because the AI was running everything. Then what? Right. Nobody can even make me an ice cream anymore. What's up? How do we do this? I, I don't I, even I would, know how. I would be bad. I would be screwed if my phone got messed up. I would. would I don't know a phone number of my own anymore. You know, like. Yeah. Like I remember back Think in the day, we up, like we knew everybody's phone number. Like I don't yeah. know any phone numbers. Like, you know, it's just in my phone. I go by name and hit dial. You know, <laughs> like yeah. Think about I don't even that. know my company's number. Yeah, I just how many, how many phone button. numbers do you guys actually know off the top of your head? Just like, me and my wife. Know, that's it. I don't know any. I know mine and my wife's. That's it. That's yeah, <laughs> I mean, I think I, I know too. my brothers. Maybe my brothers. That's it. <laughs> I have to call him. Hey, man, I need numbers. Do you have numbers? Like, that's crazy. You, yeah, you just mentioned that, Mel. If shit was to hit the fan, and we have no more computers, no nothing, the world is fucked. We are going to be like dumb, like dummies, like fucking... We're going to be like cavemen, dude. We don't know what to do. We're going to be like those uh, Tesla owners in Chicago, right? Where they couldn't charge their cars on the supercharger? <laughs> yeah, we're like, just... Like, what do we do? Do we just stuff. stand here in the 20 do, below zero freezing weather? Yeah, right? we just... Even it'll my phone doesn't you. work. <laughs> it'll charge eventually, right? Right. <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> but that, yeah, I don't know. The future's crazy. I don't know. Like I said, like just one little bullshit happens, dude. One fucking hacker group gets in and hacks everything and breaks the fucking AI. The whole world is crippled. Everything's fucked. We're all fucked. Everything. It's crazy. Think about that. Yeah. Wow. You think if you have, like, a military that's running on, like, all tech, all, like, high, most advanced military in the world with AI fucking killer robots and shit, and the motherfucking enemy hacks your fucking killer robot's AI, guess what? That killer robot is now your enemy, too. He's not, you're not fighting alongside that fucker. That fucker's going to turn around and try to kill you. You know what I mean? Like that's, I've that's seen that movie. Takes. I've seen it happen, man. It could be, become a reality. It's all... It's going to, this is fucking future scary, but we'll see what happens. Look at the same thing with, with like the people like trying to push electric cars on everyone, man. Like, like, yeah, I get it, dude. I get it. like the, the whole environmental impact of it or whatever. Like, yeah. But at the same time, it's like, what's going to happen when all these batteries go dead? Yeah. Where are we going like, to put them? Like these batteries don't decompose in a fucking landfill. Like they We're don't. Gonna, is, I know, uh, <laughs> That Giga Factory one in Texas. There's one in Nevada, but I don't know. Maybe we just bury them in the desert out there in Nevada. We were just, we were just oh yeah, we're just gonna just pollute the earth. But but it's okay because we're saving the rest of the planet. We're yes, gonna pollute, we're gonna pollute this part of the planet, guys. But Why we're not? saving there's the no... we're, we're saving the rest of the planet though. That's okay. It's kind of like sweeping it under the rug. That's that's the whole point. <laughs> it is. It is what it is. That is what it is. <laughs> You're literally yeah, exactly. sweeping it under the rug. It's like it's yeah. Like, oh no. We'll just deal with that later. No big deal, guys. It's not a big worry. It's just going to kill us 50 fucking years from now, but it's okay. We'll just bury the batteries here in the desert. No big fucking deal. That's where they put the nuclear bombs, right? I don't know. Yeah, yeah they did exactly. those tests out there. It's, it's exactly like that. Like, like that didn't fuck up the planet somehow. All those fucking nuclear tests. Like, like all that shit. Man, so fucking humans are stupid. We're all just a bunch of dummies. Bunch of dumb humans. I'm pissed now. I'm mad. I'm depressed. Speaking, speaking of being mad, did you <laughs> guys not, see that? Okay. Did you guys see that new road Excited that got? Future. You see that new road? Speaking of the future that got built in Detroit. No, it's like no. a. So listen, there's a company out there. I forget what it's called, but they they built the road, and the road has like a fucking lane on it that's painted green, and it's only for electric vehicles, and it charges your car. As you drive on that lane, they put like fucking conductor coils under the road, like in the pavement mm -hmm. that wirelessly, they wirelessly like are sending electricity signals up and they charges your car. If you like park it over it or you drive over it, it's charging That's your cool. car. So I'm assuming you guys had to pay a fee for driving on that road. Like I don't know. Well, you like, probably, I, there's, I assume there's probably the electricity like somehow, right? Like somebody has to be paying for electricity. Well, I, I assume, Mayo, if, like, let's, just, let's assume this became widely it's available. Free, Mayo. Right. Yeah, wish. <laughs> probably, well, not in California, it wouldn't be. But uh, Detroit, probably, at first. 
but I can see the things popping up on your screen. Hey, you've got an electric charge road. Do you want to pay 35 or whatever dollar for every mile or whatever it might be? I don't know. Just assuming that's how it plays out. That just seems kind of like, like how they implement this, it, but yeah, that it, would be cool. Like, it's a cool concept and I like the idea of it, but like at the same time, like I said, like how much road is that road maintenance going to cost when that fucking shit starts getting potholes and shit in it? Like, 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 how much is that going to cost to fix, Gunny? Yeah. Can you just Oh, yeah, that would there? cost a little extra, yeah. right? Well, here's the way I see it. I guess us as the gas-burning guzzler vehicles will have to pay the extra registration and ga- tax fee at the uh, yeah. pump, you know? Yeah, what it is. But hey, if it, if it, if it advances uh, technology further, then sure, you know, rather than them running out of juice on the side of the road. Oh, Gunny. Gunny, I thought you were a boomer, Gunny. This is not boomer mentality. I know. I'm too yeah. positive tonight. Yeah. Positive. Boomer, boomer mentality. You're supposed to be negative about all the new shit and say how us dumb kids are fucking things up. Okay. How we're messing up your, your, the way of life. <laughs> I know. Right. Uh, I'm going to keep to my old four truck and get seven miles to the gallon. Uh, America. <laughs> fuck. Yeah. Or we drive big trucks and shoot big guns. Yeah. Yeah. We don't care anyway. about the environment. We got cattle farms out here. No problem. Yeah, we, we don't need no environment. That don't do nothing. I'll like be dead part. anyways. Long gone. Environment just sits there. It don't even do anything for you. Yeah. It rains in the winter and it's hot as hell in the summer. The only two all, I know. That's all I need. <laughs> <laughs> drill, anyways. drill, drill, baby. Drill, drill, drill. <laughs> get, get, get us out of here, Gunny. Fuck. All right, fine. All right. Uh, right. Let's see here, guys, real quick. I'm trying to be on my... My quiet voice here. It's past my bedtime. Uh, real quick, guys, over on PlayStation, grab your PS Plus games. Make sure you grab those. Play those. And right. you don't have to play them. Just make sure you claim them. And over on Game Pass, uh, over on the PC, the Xbox, all that good stuff. You do have, if you're a Formula One person, F123. So you don't even need to buy those things, right? You're just a year behind. They're the same game. So mm. play that F123. Pal World on both the console box and on PC and Turnip Boy robs a bank. You guys remember Turnip Boy? Never, I I barely played it last year, but yeah, now he robs a bank. So things are more violent. Go ahead and grab that over on Game Pass. Uh, over on the <laughs> Epic Store, you've got a free game called Love. That's actually the name of the game. L O V E. You want to know what Love is, guys? No. Love is a reductive platformer. Uh, it's got that retro look with a focus on. Very challenging difficulty. Uh, you can even have custom respawn system with 16 levels, a 12 track soundtrack. Uh, the a- music actually sounds pretty good. I haven't played that. I've just claimed it. So, yeah, go check that out on Epic. Claim it. Uh, but yeah, guys, go find me over on Xbox, Epic Store, all that good stuff. Gamer tag, Gunny Chief, and the PlayStation HDP underscore Gunny. Where do we find you, mail? Uh, you're going to find me on the PlayStation, on the Xbox, on Steam. Everywhere is the mail. You know, best place to obviously reach out to us is Discord. Join our Discord channel over there. You know, like Jesus says, the link is in the show notes. Come over, say hi. Come chat it up with us. Hang out while I'm playing some Dead Cells. Maybe I'll stream a little bit while I'm playing. You know, Jesus walk pops in every once in a while. He's just, you know, kind of chit-chat a little bit. And yep. Come check out the Discord if you're not on there. You, Jesus. And I'm on everything. It's Jesus walks a lot. That's it. I'm out of here. Uh, do I have to say goodbye or something? Uh, I guess. <laughs> I guess. I mean, I mean, it's kind of weird. And he just walked away. As Gidget would say, peace out, Brussels sprouts. We'll catch you on the next edition of the Horrible Gamers Podcast. Take it easy, guys. Bye, everyone. Bye. See ya.